Is that what you brought me for here today to answer questions about a man's travel habits? Are you really pinning this, the hopes of these two young men on a, on a phone call? That was a shit quote, but, you know. You are now entering the world of Musings of a Geek podcast network. Stay geeky, my friends. ramblings of a Scottish weed on whore and a pissy ex-video store clerk. Their ongoing mission is to set right the movie wrongs. They're gonna need a bigger podcast. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 11 of the 365... It's 11, isn't it? It is 11, yeah, yes. episode 11 of the 365 Flicks podcast. It's kind of, it kind of feels like the second season, because we really just built right up for episode 10. Oh, that difficult second series. Oh, that difficult second oh. series. Oh, And it kind of feels like that's what we're doing now. We're, we're stepping into phase two. Well, I like that. So does that mean, though, that we're going to be doing Christmas specials for the next three years? I'm not big on Christmas specials. Like uh, That's no, usually where no. your TV show fails, isn't it? There's too much anticipation built up through the year. Mm-hmm. You know, like I can't wait to see the Sherlock Christmas specials but i'd rather they just brought series series three out yeah i'm not i'm not convinced about that yeah i don't want them to do it for anybody who doesn't know it's going to be set in victorian times it's going to have nothing to do with the massive ending to the last series where apparently moriarty is back it's got nothing to do with that it's going to be set in, in victoria time Victorian really? times yeah when was this discussed when was that announced that that was that was announced a while back oh no and they're doing series four they're filming next year apparently also just the christmas special Aye. Oh, right. And then series four is going to cover what, what all happened with Moriarty. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So, mm, it's a good idea. It's something different, I suppose. It's, it's a one-off. We'll let them off yeah. with it. It'll still be good. Anyway, sorry, yeah. So anyway, episode 11 of the 365 Flix podcast. You can find us on the Facebook page, 365 Flix, the Twitter page, 365 Flix pod. Find us wherever you want. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, Podomatic... Come and listen. So that's the pimpage done. We do have a little promo that has been sent to us from a couple of other lads that we, well, I quite like listening to and I'm trying to get you onto them. Yeah, we'll be playing their promo a little bit later. That sounds like I've got it on a soundboard just primed to just make it go, but I really don't. So the <laughs> usual way, <laughs> I'm just trying to sound professional, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. <laughs> but we're really not, we're just a couple of schmoes. Regular schmegular schmoes. So anyway. Episode 11, we're going to do the news roundup, as we always do. We're going to do our top five of, what did we say? We It was like Brit flicks, and then it became British direct then. Movies by British directors. Yeah, I'll be honest, I kind of I kind of was a bit harsh on myself, and I sort of stuck to more Brit flicks for my list. Ah, uh, yeah, I did. But they are all directed by British directors, so. They're all British directors, right? Like. Yeah. So that's fine. That was we didn't want to put too many rules and regs on us. And then we'll be moving on to the age-old debate of Iron Man three versus The Dark Knight Rises. Want to give a little bit of history on why we're doing that? Well, we've been arguing about it off and on since well, since the movies were released, really. <laughs> um, whereas I think that Iron Man three is the better of the two movies, and you're wrong. I'm wrong. However, I have already won this debate. Kind of. When when the when the website was up and running, we we did a big written half an essay thing, and uh, I uh, put my point across and Kev put his point across, and we asked one of our friends to judge it, uh, which he did, and he picked. The Dark Knight Rises over Iron Man 3. Because I was right and you were wrong. So basically because we um, were able to talk about it a little bit easier than we are right about it, we decided to rehash the age-old debate and just get it out of the way. Just stop it. Plus it's been we've been mentioning it. It's been coming for a while. Yes, and I, I do um, promise I do promise that once I win this debate once and for all, I won't mention it again in the podcast. I can't make any such promise. We're going to keep on do, revisiting it like uh, like the SMP. We're going to keep on revisiting it in, until they actually get the fucking result they want. Oh, political. Oh, political. We don't do politics on our show. Sorry, I apologise. And then we're going to finish up with the basketball review. Um, we have a little section where we kind of give each other movies to watch that we may or may not have seen and may or may not even like I in the last episode gave Chris Basketball a movie by Matt Stone and Trey Parker the guys that done South Park from which you kind of 
didn't hate from what I'm getting. I didn't, I didn't hate it at all. Well, I'm not going to um, say that backfired because I like it. It's a good film. Given the fact that the, f- the first ma- movie you made me watch was Biodome, I think you kind of owed me one, to be honest. I kind of thought that. I kind of. So I'll... you see, the thing is, I gave you Rat Race to watch, which you didn't mind, kind of. So this time, I'm going to bloody well get you back for Bio the Dome good and proper so well I can't wait to hear what that movie's going to be uh huh so like I said we're going to start with the news roundup this is episode 11 I am the pissed off ex video store clerk Kev and I am Chris the Scottish Whedon whore so let's just get into there it there you go Dong. Hmm. okay um right where are we going to start right okay so First of all, Martin Freeman, uh, yes. anybody who doesn't know, plays The Hobbit. Um, Martin Freeman has joined Captain America Civil War. Yeah. So there's all sorts of rumours out there about who who he's going to play. Spider-Man. See, that was one of the ones that I read, that he was going to really? play an older version of Spider-Man. But I think that would suck balls. So there so are actually, that. there's actually people out there who think he could be playing Spider-Man. Aye, uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, I read that he's he's apparently playing a government agent or something like that. I did read that he's a he's like a non superhero type role. He's mm-hmm. so he'll be like a yeah government y sort of Gary Shandling role from from the Captain America two. You know the Hail Hydra guy. But I get the feeling he's going to be I'm more. Happy with, I'm happy. I get the feeling he's just going to be more. You know, crap. Not crap, but he's going to be more like just government. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I. I I'm pleased he's going to be in it. Fair play in that. Quick, quick question though, as everybody's asking, and all the memes are already all over the internet for it. Is Doctor Strange and Martin Freeman's character going to share the screen? Well, I don't know. Is Doctor Strange in Civil War? Well, I think everybody's in Civil War, but yeah, <laughs> it would be um, good to see them together. It would be good. It would be good. Yeah. You know, as soon as we've got. But then, uh, apparently, another thing I read about. Um, Cumberbatch preparing for Doctor Strange as he's he's like completely changing his appearance apparently. Really? Not quite sure not, not what being, that means. Not but... being funny, there's not a great deal that man's going to be able to change though. No, not really. He's got to grow his hair slightly longer. Yeah, he's he's quite a recognisable chav. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not I'm not sold on that. But it didn't. Uh, I mean, like I say, it it didn't say what that actually meant. Maybe yeah. it's just working out a bit or something. I don't know. I think. We also see um, Thunderbolt Ross, um, William Hurt from The Incredible Hulk. He's also yeah, that's right. He's right. coming back. Do you think this is going to be anything to do with? Um, remember back, um, I think it was The Incredible Hulk movie when you got the end credit scene when Tony Stark walks in the bar. Yeah. Do you think it's going to be anything to do with that? Is is that what he's coming back for? Because I always got Could the feeling even. there was I always got the feeling there was some sort of experiment going to be happening there, like Tony and. Um, um, William Hurt were going to be kind of working together sort of thing. Doesn't um, his character turn into like Red Hulk or something like that? Something sure crazy. I, sure I read that. I... It is something like that, yeah. Um, I'm, I mean, full disclosure, we we love the MCU, we, we love like the TV shows, we love Flash Hour and all that. I wouldn't say we're necessarily the biggest, you know, comic book geeks out there. No, no, I mean... Uh, um, but we do know what we know. Pretty much just spider-man but uh, that doesn't mean to say that i know every single thing about him yeah so if if we do come out with something that you're calling bullshit on let us know that's all i'm saying on that (laughs) one thing that i did read that i'm um i'm pumped for is the uh sticking with like the sort of mcu thing the writers of infinity wars have been announced Mm. and it's the same guys who did Captain America Winter Soldier. Well, yeah, the, the, the Infinity Wars, the direct, as we already knew, were the Russo brothers, and now they're bringing their Captain America Winter Soldier um, writing buddies along, mm. and that's um, Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely. But when I looked into them, they also wrote the first Captain America. They wrote Cap didn't 2. They write, didn't they write Thor 2 as well? Yeah, we'll let them off for that. <laughs> we'll totally let them off for that. So I'm I'm happy with the direction they're taking. I'm happy with the fact that they're keeping the same sort of people involved in the big things. Definitely, yeah. Like I'm I'm really shame they didn't write Iron Man three. To be fair, you want to save that till later on. But yeah, like I read that and I'm pleased for that because Star was come when Civil War comes out all the way to Infinity Wars. These are gonna be really important movies now. So we yeah. we need the same writers on board. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would. Um, I did. Uh, I did. Th- hear a thing on, I can't remember where I heard it, it might have been a thing on, on 
the YouTubes, that, like, DC doesn't have somebody like Kevin Feige sort of calling the shots and making sure all the movies go in a, in a yeah. certain direction. Uh, with DC, it's kind of just up to the writer, pretty much. And Fe- Feige's, Feige's very much the linchpin when it comes to, to Marvel. And he's just signed a new contract, apparently. Yeah, because they, they had this big thing where they didn't know if it was going to be signed or whatever, and mm. oh, you can't let Feige go. If you're Marvel, you're holding on to him. Oh, you've got to, like... Although it would have been nice um, if, he, yeah. if he just jumped ships and went to DC for a little bit. We need to make sure Spider-Man's okay before any of that. Oh, he's going to make sure Spider-Man's fine. Speaking of Spider-Man... I think so. Oh, go on. We've got the, the shortlist for the directors. Have you seen this? I have. I'm not really familiar with, it, with any of the movies, though, to be honest. I, I read that shortlist and I was kind of like... I'm not saying I want a big-name director. I wanted someone... You know, someone I could trust with it. I just wanted Joss Whedon. I know you wanted Joss Whedon. <laughs> that was always your big thing. You ain't going to get him, though, are you? No, no, no that, that's not going to happen. But yeah, like I said, I, I mean, I read the list, but I'm really not familiar with any of the names uh, or, or the movies, really, that they've that they've directed. So I'm not really any further forward. I've seen a couple of the movies of the directors, and I think the one that stood out was Jared Hess. He directed Napoleon Dynamite, which right. I, I think is a great movie, but it's not exactly what you would hope from Spider-Man. Yeah. I've not seen that, to be honest with you, but... That's that's my biggest fear, yeah. like, we need to get a good director locked into this movie. Yeah, it's a bit of a... I mean, see, the thing is, you've got, like, you you know, your Kevin Feige in there, and, you know, and you'll have sort of your action sort of What's the word? I don't know. Whatever. Person. Your action sort of coordinators on that. Yeah. So it's really, it's just sort of somebody to oversee it, isn't it? So even if the director doesn't have any action movie experience, it's not, it's not necessarily going to mean it's bad. Do you think maybe they could let Kevin Feige have a crack at directing one? I'd be happy with that. He seems to, he seems to love Spider-Man. Yeah, he's you got know, he's got so, a lot of love. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd be happy with that. Like. I mean, you'd have to assume that after or after he's basically like as like like we've just said, masterminded the whole thing. You'd have to assume at some point they'll let him take on the on the director's hat. That would be good, if it, you know. If I that know. if that does happen, you heard it here first. Well, we've called things before. You never know. We've called a shit ton of things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> staying on Marvel. Tom Hardy wants to play the Punisher. Ah, now we think about that. Now you see. I read that, and I was really like, I would love to see him as a Punisher, you know. Definitely, yeah. I will, I will admit, and and full kind of cards on the table. When the original Punisher came out, not the Dolph Lundgren one, but the one with Tom Jane, I thought Tom Jane was fantastic in that role. Yeah, you know, I've never seen that. Have you never seen it? Oh, it's a nah, wicked nah. movie. It's it's a stupid movie, but it's a wicked movie. <laughs> Tom Jane is fantastic as Frank Castle, aka Punisher. You know, Tom Hardy though. Oh my days, that would just that would be a hell of a movie if he was to do that. But do you not think now that he's kind of made Mad Max, you know, it, it's it's sort of a less superhero-y type of Punisher because he's he's just mental. But the Pun- Punisher isn't really a superhero, is he? He's just uh, not really. He's just a vigilante. Gun fella, isn't he? So he's just Batman, but he's got no problem with killing people. Aye, yeah. That Tom Hardy could absolutely nail Aye, that. He, he could nail it. He could nail it. However, as I was about to say, read that interview that he'd said that, and then he's been into another press uh, junket for Mad Max, and he's been teasing that he's actually signed on to a Warner Brothers DC title. Oh, right. And he was given all sorts of vague kind of kind of clues and but nobody can really put their finger on what it is. I don't know if he's just trying to piss everyone around maybe it's just Tom Hardy having a bit of fun but he did do Batman uh, Dark Knight Rises he, he was signed on at Suicide Squad for a while it, you know it, it, I think it's more likely that he'll do another DC yeah but I mean if you know if the Suicide Squad movie he left it because it was like a mess, didn't he? Well, there was a lot of things saying that it was um, it was the Will Smith show, so he didn't like mm. he didn't want part of it. There was a lot of things saying there wasn't really a script going around, but then it kind of came out that one of the movies that he was doing post post production on had gone three months overdue. Right. So. Right. I see. I don't know. There was that many different mm. things going around. So what what sort of um, stuff did he say when he was teasing it? Like just saying that it was sort of like um. As, like a, a comic book type movie, like um, a superhero comic book type movie with a sort of pulp fiction twist, saying that it's it's not set in a surreal type world. It could easily be like the movie Heat. Right. He's dropping names of movies that I'm sitting there thinking, oh my fucking, I would love to see that. Like a superhero movie like Heat. Like, 
But then again, that, that kind of is what Suicide Squad sounds like to me. Yeah, uh, it is sort of shaping up that like that kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah. So I don't know. He was he was just drop he was just dropping really vague, cryptic kind of, and he did he said at one point in the interview that he was signed on to a Warner Brothers DC title. Right. And it just you know what whatever he ends up doing, whether it's something with Marvel or something with DC, I'm still going to go and see it. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Having said that, if you gave me the choice of some random DC title that we maybe don't know a lot about, or The Punisher, I'd mm-hmm. take The Punisher every day. Yeah, definitely I. Yeah. That's just a role he could nail. Mm-hmm. Well, so, got- so we're kind of on the DC trail there. We we um we did the last episode a little bit. Well, it wasn't too early, but a couple of days later, there was a lot of Suicide Squads started happening. We kind of talked about Will Smith's picture, and then all of a sudden, we got the group photo of everyone. Yeah. So what do we think? Harley looks fucking awesome. She does. And I have to say, I wasn't too sure about Will Smith from the first picture, where he was basically dressed as Wicked Wicked Wild Wild. Yeah. I wasn't convinced about that first photo, but the second photo when he was in the group, and then there was another photo came out not not too long after of him wearing the mask, and yeah. he looks pretty fucking good. Like he does, sold. he looks badass. I think I think they all look badass. I, I was gonna... yeah. I mean, I don't really know. Like the only other one I know really is the Killer Croc. That's yeah, because one I think it was the Arkham games he was in. But the other characters like Boomerang and that, I really don't know anything about them. I don't know a massive great deal about a lot of them. I kind of know Boomerang, but I know Boomerang through um, Arrow because he was a character in Arrow. So I've done a little bit of research. He, he was kind of in Arrow, and then he I'm sure he crossed over in the you know the crossover episodes in uh-huh. Arrow and Flash. He was the baddie in that and called him Captain right. Boomerang. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, so I kind of knew a little <laughs> bit about him because I've done a bit of research when that all came out. Um. The rest of them, I'm, I'm not massively don't know much about them. But for me, instantly I was drawn to Harley Quinn, just instantly. <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought you would be like, she does look really bloody good. I've been be I've been sold on Margot Robbie from day one. I've been sold on her definitely. But again, the the big complaint that we had in the last episode, where they keep dropping these things and letting us see things. I went on one website and there was like four like one minute videos obviously taken on somebody's mobile phone on the set of the movie. Why are they letting these things out? Why are, oh, they, why are they letting this happen? That. Yeah, I didn't know that. I saw I, I saw a headline of like listen to yeah. Marvel Robbie doing was that which, what it was? Which to be fair you couldn't really hear her. You really had to yeah. turn your volume up to like a hundred percent to hear that voice. Why? Why I, the I hell? I don't want to hear it. I didn't click on it. Like I, I, I don't want to. Why are these things anymore? leaking? Why are they doing it? Uh, it annoys the hell out of me right now because this is the one DC movie. Batman, Superman aside, this is the one DC movie I have got so much faith in, and they keep doing this and doing this, and I'm getting pretty pissed off. Like, mm. and that's the thing we've said before. You know, it could be like Amazing Spider-Man Two syndrome kind of thing, where by the time it actually is released, you've seen so much of it, and it's been rammed down your throat so much that you kind of think uh okay but kind of at least with that the movie was done it was made it was coming out yeah this movie, ah, this movie sort of... is, it's i it's... mean you know with any movie pretty much you know any superhero movie anyway you get you know you get sort of pictures of you get you know you get images like you know deadpool and that you get images of him as deadpool you know this is the first first look out of, of yeah Deadpool and whatever. I'm I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. It's just these like same as you, just these sort of these videos and stuff the letting... being leaked and, and like Jared Leto doing the Joker voice at his gigs and all oh. that that kind of thing. Just stop it. They shouldn't be allowed to do it. Yeah, they have to they have to stop doing it. It's they're gonna ruin Suicide Squad before it gets before it comes out. I'm just sick of all these videos and it needs to stop now. Um yeah, I mean I, I'm just not watching any of them basically you know just moving on from dc and marvel uh there are a couple of things about star wars yeah star wars has had a bit of an exciting time yeah well the first thing i read um which is just a rumor and it's just a little sort of easter egg that that might be in episode seven is that jj might have or might be killing off jar jar <laughs> Is this is this just pure fan service? It is, yes. I a bit, a bit. I mean, it's not going to be. You know, you. I don't think you're going to see him getting blown up or anything like that. I think the the theory that I read was you're just going to see like Jar Jar's skeleton or something like yeah. that, and for a split second in the bottom of the screen or something like that. I quite like that. I think um, 
if you go back a few episodes, we actually called that as well, didn't we? <laughs> or was that just a fantasy we had? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, yeah. Didn't we say, uh, you know, about Jar Jar and Carbonite and stuff like that? Yeah, we would. That'd be cool if you did that. Like, like the game, like in the game, if they kind of just walk through a throne room and there's Jar Jar and Carbonite. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'd be totally I, up for I, that. I could cope with that. I'd like be guy. totally up for that. <laughs> At this point, JJ could just sit on the middle of the screen and, and have a nice little festive turd, and we're gonna love that movie. So we are. Yes, we the, are. The definitely. more, the more Easter eggs he throws in there. Although I did see something about him dialing back on Easter eggs. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really the type of person that goes in for Easter eggs in a major sort of way. I mean, it, you know, it's quite cool, sort of, you know, stuff like that. Whereas, yeah. you know, like, okay, he's killed off Jar Jar. That's Jar Jar dead there. Stuff like that, I'm fine with. But I, I, I couldn't really be asked with. Remember with Guardians of the Galaxy, so somebody had think, somebody had said that you could spend like a week to talking about all of the yeah. Easter eggs in that in the in the collectors. Sort of I in all the cases museum thing. Oh, I can't be fucked by that. <laughs> I can't be arsed by that. I mean, I'm a fanboy, but I'm not that bad. You know what I mean? Well, the the um the show that we're going to be playing the little promo for, if you're into that kind of thing, which I am a little bit, I like hearing all that. Go and listen to their podcast. I'll play that soon. But uh, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. So, what do you think about the uh, the rumor that it could possibly be a Boba Fett origins? Uh, I don't really. I'm not really bothered. I always kind of thought, I always kind of hoped we were going to get a Boba Fett Origins movie. But the more I think about it, do we really need a Boba Fett Origins movie? We saw him in episode two, we know. Yeah. I mean, presumably that's still going to be canon. We, we saw him as a kid in episode two. I don't, I'm, I'm, I've never really been a big one for Boba Fett. I didn't really see what the big deal was. I would be a bit more excited if they said it was like a, a, a Boba Fett Origins slash Han Solo Origins. Like, the two of them together. Yeah. I'd, I'd be yeah, in, I mean, I could... I'd be up for that. But I could cope that's, with that, maybe. That's clearly I not what know. it's going to be. Like, like Han Solo winning the winning the uh, Millennium Falcon off Lando, and then, yeah, and then cool. Bo- Boba getting sent after him kind of thing. Mm. Like a sort of space chase kind of movie. I'd be... Yeah, I'd be alright with that. But I mean, yeah, I'd be up for that. I just, like I say, I just, I've never sort of been a big, you know, how you get, you get sort of the super fans of of Boba Fett. You know, I, I, I've never. At the end of the day, he gets knocked into the Sarlacc pit by accident by a blind hand Solo. So <laughs> how fucking good, how, how good can he be? And that movie has reportedly lost its director. Yeah, that was the next bit. Of, next bit of uh, stuff. What I read. Josh Trank. Josh so he's Trank. Been, he's been well. Apparently, he's a bit of a nutter. Well, he's apparently he is the guy. That's not the views of three six five flicks. No, that kind of is is the views of three six five flicks on my point of view. <laughs> <laughs> because he's the guy that made Chronicle. He, he directed Chronicle, Aye. which is a fantastic and didn't he movie. He Fantastic Four as well. He's he's kind of in bed with that Max Landis, who I've mentioned before on the pad podcast, and I think the man is. He's a genius. He's a creative genius, but he's an absolute nut job. He's he's a sociopath by his own right. by his own reckoning. You know. Is that the guy who did this the Death of Superman thing? Yeah, the the video yeah. I sent you, the fifteen Aye. minute thing. And I mean, if you're if you're pals with that guy, and if you're kick, although from what I hear, they're not too pally anymore. But if you're on the same page as that guy, you, you've got a bit of a screw loose. Yeah, just the fact that they said it's because of erratic behaviour that he was. You know, it was a sort of jump before you're pushed kind of thing, so he quit. That's yeah. what I, pretty much what I read. I find I find that quite easy to believe as well. Plus, he probably wanted to do the whole film and found footage, which isn't going to work in in a galaxy far, far away. No, we, no, no, no. You can't have that. But then, I mean, like Fantastic Four isn't going to be found footage, is it? So some of it apparently is. There's there's a bit of it. Oh God, really? Because remember, way back in the day when that movie first came about. They said that it was pretty much going to be found footage all over, right. and that was the one thing that made me think, "Nah, I just don't want to be watching no, that." No, nah. But apparently, they, they they thought better of that. So, hmm. so I've got a bit of I've got a bit of TV stuff. The um, the spin-off shows from Flash and Arrow, the uh, the Supergirl show, and the Legends of Tomorrow show. Which is now an official title. Yeah, I for, saw for that. The, yeah, the superhero team up. They have pretty much. They're they're not bothered about a pilot. They're going straight to series. I read that for Supergirl, uh, which I'm pleased about. I then I hadn't read it about the uh, what was it, Legends of Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow, yeah. Aye, it's a pretty cool name, isn't it? I quite like it. It sounds very much like Teen Titans, though. And Legends of Tomorrow just sounds like they're a bunch of kids to me. <laughs> 
I know they're not because obviously Atom's going to be in it, um, Firestorm's going to be in it, mm. you know, Captain Cold, you know, all that lot. But yeah, I, I could not be more excited for that TV show. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. I'm really excited to see what they do with Supergirl. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really want to see that. You know, because they've got the the graphics there now. I mean, I, I just watched um, the episode of Arrow where they're going they're, they're 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 going to stop the plane from taking off, which has got the virus on it to go to st- and release the virus in Star Wars yeah. City. And Atom came in and he was flying about and all that. That looked cool. That looked really cool. So I'm I'm quite happy with you know the way they do the CGI and all that for Supergirl. Yeah, they're, they're getting there. Cool. And... The, the funny thing is, they seem to be doing it better on TV than they are in the movies. Because I, th- I think yeah. Atom looks pretty damn cool. I like Atom. He does, he does, yeah. I t- mm, just Cause... me being me, when when he was going about shooting at the plane and stuff, I just kind of thought, oh, it's just Iron Man. He is, he is pretty much Iron Man, I'll give you that. And he's very much Iron Man, in fact. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, you get that in the comics all the time, don't you? Like, Hawkeye and Arrow are kind of just... The sort of same hero, aren't they? Really, and you know, different things like that. So, mm-hmm. I know what you're suppose saying. Suppose you could say Iron Man and and Batman are kind of the same hero as well. No, we couldn't. Bat Batman's a way better hero. But we'll get no, there. But we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. We, by the way, um, when the shows do finish airing, the likes of your, your Gotham, your Arrow, your Flash might do Marvel, uh, Shield. We might do that. When they finish, we will do an extra episode where we're going to deal with all the shows. Yeah, I'm happy and, with that. And we'll just have a little bit recap of everything that happened. Cool. On the uh, on the subject of Agents of Shield, though, it's been renewed, so you'll be happy yeah, with all that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And so Apparently has so is, uh, Agent Carter. Yeah, so is it, so is Agent Carter. However, Constantine has been cancelled. Yeah, so sort of I've not seen any of Constantine. There's not much point now, really. Did you see Stephen Amell on Twitter? Yeah, uh, you know what? He's sound as fuck. He really. Oh, is. he's top notch. I don't know. So it's Constantine in the DC universe. Yeah, he is, right? yeah. Huh. Right. He's, uh, he's sort of like a member of the Dark kind of Justice League. There's like Dark Justice. Right, okay. He's kind of a member of that, but he dips in and out, you know. But there was always a chance that they could have crossed over, and now Stephen right. Mel's basically saying, bring back Constantine and I'll I'll cross over. That, I mean, uh, yeah, that'd be cool. There's not many actors who would do that, mind. You Bless know him. you know what it is, though? Like, we, we now know Robert Downey Jr. is kind of the, the main guy in the MCU. And I know it's on a smaller scale, but Stephen Amell is definitely the main guy for the DC TV universe. Mm. He, he just seems to be the guy, and he's cool as fuck. Of course he is. I mean, the, the, inter- he the interaction he does with his fans on Facebook. I've got him on Facebook, I've got him on Twitter. Yeah, so have I, yeah. And he's just such a cool guy, you know? <laughs> we, we need to try and get him on the podcast. I, yeah, we need to maybe get into season three before we start attracting the big names, like... Plus, he's in... He's in uh, Turtles 2 as well, so which I'm actually quite looking forward to. Yeah, you know what I am. I I I, uh, I didn't. I was. I went into it expecting to hate it. You know, with Michael Bay being attached to it, but I didn't hate it. Um, I actually listened back to one of our uh, previous podcasts during the week, and we were on about that. You'd you'd just watched it, and I hadn't watched it yet. And you know, you said quite rightly that they nailed absolutely nailed the characters of the turtles and obviously that's the most important thing that's what's missing in the transformers movies that and a script aye so do you have anything else my last bit was agents of shield and that uh, oh, uh one more bit the following i don't know if you still watch that has been axed it's been axed oh which i'm actually a little bit gutted about i've uh... i stopped watching after series one. Oh, so that, was that a fake all oh, then yeah it was a bit but did you not get the sarcasm in the voice? Not really, no. Oh, that's all right then. Bygones. Um, yes, yeah, so that, that, that's been axed. Uh, it's been a load of other ones, but that was the that was like the only one that I watched that's been axed. So, so the last bit that I've got, just keep a, keeping this going for another episode, is um, our sort of roundy uppy finishing offy bit of the news. Ah, yes. Um, or would you just fuck off? And this episode, uh, this episode's Oh Would You Just Fuck Off goes to James Cameron. James Cameron? James Cameron. I'll tell you for a while. Um, you know how it's been, what, six years or something since Avatar yeah. was released? And Avatar 2 is in apparently development hell, kind of. Didn't really seem to be any further forwards and getting it made. And I read the other day that He's actually got scripts for four sequels. Oh, my God. So, yeah, it's just kind of like, would you fuck off writing the... I mean, I'm not bothered about seeing the, the sequel to the film, to be honest. Yeah. It, it, it's overrated. In my opinion, it's overrated. Um, or it's just, you know, 
Pocahontas, but with blue people. <laughs> I still love that analogy. <laughs> I remember when you first bust that analogy out, it killed us, but it does actually kill us. So yeah, I think he should just fuck off. Make Avatar 2 if you need to. But you know what? If he's got four more movies there to make, or aye, four movies, so it's going to be five in total, um, he can barely get the second one made. Fuck me, we're all going to be dead by the time he gets five done. So we'll, we'll do the math on this, right? The first movie took ten years to make. He said it took him ten years to make it because the, the technology wasn't there. Why, why he couldn't just make it in 2D, I don't fucking know. So we've waited six years, the second movie supposedly coming, so we'll say that'll, we'll say that'll drop in four years' time. Then we've got another three. Oh, we're, uh-huh. we're going to be going a long time with these movies. Well, yeah. I mean, he's not. I mean, he, he's what, in his 50s? Yeah, let's just... I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't hope anyone dies. But let's just hope he dies before that second movie comes out. Wow. I'm not I'm not a big Cameron fan. I, I don't have any love for James Cameron. And I don't want to see any more Avatar movies. I don't want to see any more Avatar movies. But you can't, you can't knock James Cameron. I mean, you know, he gave us T2 and... Aliens. Yeah, but lately, Titanic. apart from apart from Avatar, he just makes utter. Ugh, he doesn't make good films anymore. Those movies, the movies you're naming, is like the late eighties, early nineties. We're now in two thousand and fifteen, pal. Get with it. I know, I know. But he's not released anything other than Avatar, is he? No. That was so. Yeah, that was it. Just would you just fuck off? Fuck off, or for the for the more gentle audience, leave the room. So that's the news roundup on episode 11. Aye. Not a massive great deal going on. Not really, not really. We're kind of waiting for, I get, you know, we're, we're waiting for the Spider-Man news to drop and all that kind of thing. Yeah, once once that comes out, we'll, we'll be more excited, I, th- I suppose. Yeah, I, I think, well, we're down to two names now. Yeah, we're down to two. It's Asa I think and... The last, the last news that we did, it was four, wasn't it? Four or five. So it's Asa Butterfield and Tom Holland, which... Both of them, I'm I'm happy with. Yeah, I've I've still not watched all of uh, the Impossible because the wife got a bit squeamish. But yeah, from what I'd saw of Tom Holland, I'm I'm sold on him right now. I I could I could easily see him. I still think it's gonna be Butterfield though. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. It, it it has to be. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I'm happy with that. I think it'll be good. So from that, we will move on to our next piece, which is our top five. Oh. It's our top five Brit flicks slash Brit directors. Um, before we get on to that, I'll play the little promo from the Jock and Nerd podcast. These two guys, I've started listening to them, and they are just, just total, total comic book fiends. And <laughs> I've not, I've not, uh, I have been getting into podcasts more. I, I still can't believe, I still can't believe as a podcaster, you don't listen to podcasts. I'm only recently a podcaster. So, um, but I am I am getting into it. Shut up! But I've not listened to, I've not listened to theirs yet. But I will. It's just because I've not finished Arrow and Flash and all yeah. that yet. So I don't want spoilers. So yeah, well that's they, why they are on American time, so they're about yeah. two two episodes ahead of us. I mean, I I, I um get them in other ways, so I do watch them at the same time. I'm not going <laughs> to say I, saying that. I'm not going to say I illegally download them, am I? But I get them, and at the same time as America, and, and I like to watch them because. I'm like an instant gratification sort of person, but you can't <laughs> you can't listen to these guys if you're not up to date on your shows because that's what yeah we're talking yeah about. especially with Arrow because I mean I think you're ahead of me as I said before I'm just on the end of that episode where yeah that's that's they, same that's same week that's like you're getting that the same week as me all right okay still, so, still right, a couple okay, of days right. ahead but it's right. the same week and I think I'm getting yeah. Flash like a week ahead of you as well. Yeah, they've had a couple of breaks. But that's all good. That's all good. But, yeah. It's just the way it rolls. But if if you're not caught up on your shows, don't listen to the Jock and Nerd because they will spoil them. If you are yeah, if you I are caught up on your them. shows, they'll probably give you a lot of insight into some stuff that you didn't see because they're like that. I like them. You should listen to them. I will. It's a little bit of what do they call it? Cyber pond cross platform. Mm. You know. In Northumberland. In Northumberland. Yeah, that's us. So, the Jock and Nerd Podcast. Hey, are you a jock that likes comics? Are you a nerd that likes comics? Do you feel left out sometimes? Well, then we've got the show for you. I'm Imran. And I'm Anthony. He's the jock. And he's the nerd. And we host the Jock and Nerd Podcast at jockandnerd.com. If you're looking for fun, entertaining, laugh-out-loud geek chat over all the latest Marvel DC shows and news, visit jockandnerd.com. Full spoiler podcast, lots of swearing. Uh, you're such a jock. You're such a nerd. Oh, come on. Shut up, nerd. Okay.
We're going to move on to the top five now. Do you have your top five? Was it an easy top I five? Certainly, I certainly do, yeah. So top five movies made by British directors, yeah? Yeah. Right, that's fine. I, I, like I say, I kept to the, I sort of kept myself to a rule. Um, Brett Flick, British directors, but that was purely because as soon as you started throwing in some of those big names... There was just far too many. There were. I mean, I was looking. Uh, I was looking through um, internet movie database and bloody all that kind of thing. And yeah, I just kind of thought, uh, you know, I had I had a my first list was a bit ten strong. Yeah. So I had to be a bit brutal on that. And I, I kind of also thought, you know, going back to when I re-listened to one of our earlier podcasts, where our list was pretty much identical, about apart from the Amazing Spider-Man too. Yeah. So I kind of kept that in mind as well, because I'm I'm fairly sure you won't have any of these guys on your list. <laughs> Um, so yeah, especially yeah. So my number five, which you definitely won't have, is Sam Mendes for Skyfall. For Skyfall, you know Sam Mendes has made some brilliant films. I loved Skyfall. I know you loved Skyfall because you're like a Judy Dench whore, but <laughs> it wasn't. We should change it from from Joss Whedon to Judy Dench. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get we'll get in touch with Will Will the guy that created the the intro and we'll just get him. Can you change it to Judy Dench Hall? He's no longer a fan of Joss Whedon. <laughs> so we're we gonna get that changed. No, we're not gonna get that changed. <laughs> no, no, that, we'll just leave it for Joss Whedon, I think. Okay, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there just now. So yeah, Skyfall. Uh, well, you know, I love the movie. Um, still not as good as. Golden Eye. Is any is any James Bond movie going to be as good as Golden Eye? No, I don't think it is. But uh, you know, uh, it's a good movie. Uh, you know, it's got it's got a lot of good action scenes. It's got a good story. Got a good bad guy. Got a good James Bond. Got Judy Dench in there. Got an extreme Home Alone at the end. So, <laughs> what more could you want? You've also got sort of you know a bit of fan service for the you know the sort of back in the day kind of movies where uh, Sean Connery and that. You've got sort of patches on them as well in there, so... I'll give you that, you know, Skyfall didn't really... It didn't do much for me. I know you didn't like it. Um, I like Casino Royale. I thought Quantum of Solace was terrible. Yeah. But Skyfall, yeah, it clawed it back a little bit, I suppose. I think my biggest problem was there wasn't enough Javier Bardem. I I wanted more of him, because he's just a brilliant actor. Was that the villain? Yeah. Yeah, I'm straight with him, sorry. But then how much how much of a bad guy can you really show in your movies? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, he was good. I wasn't crazy about the way he died in the movie. It was a bit... Poo. Yeah. I just thought it could, they could have had a better sort of face-off and a better yeah. death for him. But other than that, you know, he was a pretty sinister bad guy, you know, when he took his sort of face plant, uh, face shapey thing out and stuff. Yeah. You know, it was good. Don't question me. I'll give you that. I mean, Sam Mendes is a great director and mm-hmm. I'll give him credit for other stuff he's done. I don't think Skyfall was that brilliant but yeah it is you know and the James Bond is as well as fucking British as you get well yeah there so, you go there you go and I'm looking forward to seeing Spectre later, later on in the year as well I am a little bit more now that you've kind of seen well you haven't seen Christoph Waltz but you've sort of heard his voice I am a little bit more because Christoph Waltz just kicks ass I, haven't you got Batista in there as well yeah Batista's in there not Aye. not as Drax though, so that's a bit shame. <laughs> That'd be a bit weird. Well, they could do they could do the Marvel um, crossing over with James Bond. Just have Drax the Destroyer as a sort of odd job type. Chris Pratt dancing. Definitely. Every movie should have Chris Pratt dancing. To... I'm kind of hoping that's what the climax of the Jurassic World movie is. <laughs> he distracts the dinosaur by doing a dance off. <laughs> it's a dance off, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my number five, I went for. Um, I wanted to get him out of the way quick because I think he's a crap director now, but he was at the time. Brilliant. British director Guy Ritchie and the movie is Snatch. Yeah. As I say, I don't think he's doing great stuff right now. I'm yet to see The Man from Uncle, which is coming out soon, which they say is brilliant, but those Sherlock Holmes movies were fucking terrible. The first one was good. No, it wasn't. Okay. So I went back, all the way back to Snatch, the second movie he made, and Snatch was pretty good when it came out, like... You know what? I was never really a. I, I was never a fan of those kind of. You know, because he had like Lockstock and then Snatch, and there was another one sort of all came around about the same time. I was never really a big fan of them. They're very, they're very British. They have very British actors in them, but uh, Snatch was kind of the one where he drafted in a few Americans. I uh, wasn't Brad Pitt. You had like a Brad Pitt playing the the Jippo, right? and he was brilliant. Like you just totally didn't realise it was Brad Pitt. Like well, you knew, yeah. it was, you knew it was Brad Pitt because you were waiting to see him. But when he comes on screen and he starts doing the Irish accent is just phenomenal. I should maybe rewatch them, to be honest, because it was a long time ago that I watched them. Like I say, skip, skip Lockstock. 
don't watch anything he's done after Snatch and you're good to go. I like Sherlock Holmes. So. Really? Yeah, okay. I'm not a big fan of them. I'm really not. Plus, the TV show's way better. Well, of course it is, but... Combo Batch is far better than Downey Jr. That was never in question. But I just kind of... When I think of British directors... When when we, when we I said Brit Flicks, British director, the first one that popped in my head was Guy Ritchie, and I was already like, right. He goes at number five, so I get him out of the way. I was actually going to put him in for Sherlock. I thought you were going to say... I thought you were going to say swept away there. What the hell's that? It's the movie he made for Madonna with Madonna in it. Oh, no. So your number four. My number four, uh, and again, I'm pretty sure you won't have this on your list. You might have this director, but not this movie. Uh, my number four was Ridley Scott for Kingdom of Heaven. Kingdom of Heaven? Aye. That's a bold choice. The amount of things that Ridley Scott's made. Well, yeah. See, that's the thing. I was looking through the, the list of all the, the films that he's done in that. And I've said before that I think Blade Runner is, is overrated. Yeah. It's not my favourite movie that he's done. I love Alien. And I was looking through it, and out of all of them, Kingdom of Heaven is the one that I've watched the most. Really? I enjoy the movie. Yeah, I enjoy the movie, and I. I'm, I'm not gonna. gonna I'm not gonna fault you for Kingdom of Heaven. I quite enjoyed the Kingdom of Heaven. I mean, that's the one with the Lando Bloom, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, he's a bit of a whiny prick yeah. in it, but. You can get past well, he that. is, but you know, he just he's just playing. It was at the time where like Pirates was out and Lord of the Rings was out, and he, he was just basically playing the same. Like Liam Neeson now, he's just basically playing the same character over again. Yeah, he's just like Legolas, but without the ears, kind of thing. Yeah, it is but, a sta- you know, it's you, a had, pretty you, you had you had some. Uh, I, I like stuff about that period. Yeah, you do you do like your period movies? I do like my period movies. Yeah, um, <laughs> you fucking child. Uh, you know what? After that came up my mouth there, I thought, ah, oh, shit, it's too far. I'm going to get us taken off, eh? Uh, you weren't there, not me. But anyway, um, I like that. I like movies about that period in history, that era and stuff. And it's a good movie. And I've watched it quite a few times. And yeah, I will say the uh, the version to watch, if nobody's watched this, people haven't watched it, is the director's cut of it. Yeah, Ridley likes a director's cut, doesn't he? Yeah. Well, I mean, how many director's cuts is fucking... Blade I think it's coming in at roughly 17 now. Yeah, isn't there another one coming out soon? Yeah, supposedly. Because they're making Blade Runner 2, so there's going to be another, another another two versions will hit the cinema for it. But yeah, the, the director's cut of Kingdom of Heaven is a lot better than the theatrical cut, I have to say. So, if anybody wants to give it a try, watch that. I haven't watched it in a long time, and I think I will. I think I'll give it another go soon, because it's been a long time since I watched that. So my number four, I went down um, I went down the horror route. Most of, my, um, most of my British movies here are all quite funny quite humorous snatch very much is but number four i went for neil marshall who has directed a few episodes of game of thrones right so we already know he's got good pedigree uh-huh. and the movie it was hard to choose a movie though it was hard because he's done he's done like he's only made like maybe five or six movies but they're all brilliant films so i went down the line and i went for the one that killed us the most and that was dog soldiers yeah yeah that was a damn good movie I love Dog Soldiers, and when yeah. I, I sat down to watch it, I had no idea what to expect, which is the genuine... Yeah, it, it's a weird movie, but it's fucking good. I've not seen that in years. It is a great film, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, he, he had other films like um, The Descent, when the girls go cave diving. Yeah. Yeah. Great film. He had yeah. uh, he had mm. Doomsday when the cordon off Scotland, which I think is a good idea in anybody's book. It's, it's what right. we should what we should be doing right now. You wanted your landslide, but we're not going there. You know, he's he's, he's made some cracking movies. Doomsday is one of them. I do love Doomsday. It's kind of the Mad Max. I've not seen that one. I've seen the other two, though. It's very Mad Max, but set in Scotland. It's just brilliant. Mad Max in Scotland. Fucking hell. Isn't that just Saturday night in, in fucking Glasgow? <laughs> definitely. Definitely. <laughs> but I went with Dog Soldiers because it was the first Neil Marshall movie I watched, and it was brilliant. Yeah. I am I'm completely on board with that. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, okay. My number three is Christopher Nolan, The Prestige. Oh, shh. You said about Nolan, and I was going to put Nolan on there, but I knew you would choose a Nolan movie. And totally honest, that's the Nolan movie I would have chose. Yeah. I mean, you could be obvious. Didn't we say no? I did actually think, I think I texted you saying, right, there's there's a rule. You can't say Christopher Nolan in the Dark Knight. Yeah. Because it's too obvious. So, The Prestige. I mean, it, it's just absolutely fucking cracker of a movie. It is, and 
Pitt, I think it's the best movie he's made to date, even even over The Dark Knight. I, I love the prestige. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, and that's why I was that's why I was disappointed with you know, The Dark Knight Rises, because he can do movies like that. And like, um, oh, fuck, I've gone blank. The one with Leo? Inception. Inception. Stupid bastard. Uh, you know, movies like Inception as well, where, the, I mean, the prestige, the, you know, the twists and, the, you know, kept you guessing right until the end and all that. It was just fantastic. A hell yeah. of a movie. I love the prestige and Bale, Bale and Jackman both put in just brilliant performances. Definitely, definitely. I find Michael Caine is better in that movie than he is in the Dark Knight movies. He's great, great. Yeah, I character. would say yeah, I, I would agree with you. Um, because he's actually got something to do. He's not just a whiny old cant. Yeah, other than like in the case of the Dark Knight Rises, just fucking cry all the time. But we'll come to that. Oh sh! Tension is building here. <laughs> it's, like... it, it's been building for the last week. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you come to cut this together you're gonna to have to get um jill of the fates going in the background <laughs> just every time it gets mentioned in the background dun, dun. You're, you're number three my number three I, I swapped my number three with my number two and they, at the last minute i went with another sort of guy richie director actually one of his mates i went with matthew vaughn kingsman the secret service have you seen this i uh, was i i've not i've not no no i've not had a chance to see it yet um but i do want to see it this movie shows you what British directors can do when it comes to action. And I know we've been doing action for years, but let's face it, we're better at the Cockney Wide Boy comedy, aren't we? <laughs> you've got your you've got your Guy Ritchie's, you've got your Nick Loves. We're all about you know, English comedy. That's what we're about. Yeah, I would agree with you there, yeah. But, you know, your football factories and stuff yeah, like that. But yeah. Matthew Vaughan went over to America or he's he's I think he's pretty much based in America now, and he's done Kick Ass. You know, he's done the X Men movie that days. Was it which one did he do? The one before Days of Future Past. The the one when they're all young, first class. Yeah, he done like... that. You know, which which is a good we're movie film. fans, right? <laughs> I think we are. <laughs> <laughs> we're allowed to go blank once in a while. The tension, uh... the tension's bubbling. <laughs> But he's, he's making these big budget amazing movies and Kingsman is just so British, it's so action and it is bloody good. I would agree with you there, yeah. I mean, I actually did look at uh, look at him because he's also done, like, like say, Kick-Ass, uh, which I loved. Which incidentally is written by um, Jonathan Ross's wife. Busy woman, talented woman, you know. She, she She's a talented woman and he's just a prick. I don't like Jonathan Ross, I'm sorry. It's, it, don't I worry. you don't. We would never get Jonathan on this show, so don't worry about that. He might. Well, not not if, not with that attitude. Jonathan Ross is a great movie reviewer. Just in case he's listening, you know, that that's our fucking spot on the bloody Jonathan Ross show gone now. Well done. Well, I wouldn't want to go on because you'd only want to go on the night Russell Brand is. Well, that's true, yeah. So, yeah, I went with Kingsman Secret Service. When you watch this movie, you'll understand what I'm on about. It is just, it is a sublime piece of just movie making the action sequences some of the angles this guy's doing in this movie i know that's partly to do with the cinematographer and that but he's the director he's got the vision well yeah that's it i mean sorry cinematographer will do his thing but the director's there to give him well direction yeah. and there's, there's like a there's, there's a scene set in a church and i'm not going to say anything else just when you sit down to watch that movie as soon as he goes near the church just put your drink down just put it down and right. give the movie your full attention that's all i'm going to say okay so kingsman at number three yeah i'm happy with that um yeah my next one um you'll agree with it but thing with, i didn't pick one single movie because i couldn't so my, <laughs> my number two was paul greengrass for the born trilogy yeah i had a feeling you were going to put him in there rightly so as well but i couldn't i couldn't pick pick any one of the trilogy rightly so paul greengrass he's brilliant those born films are excellent you know they are considering most of the spy movies we had seen up until then was pretty much james bond and then you got this which wasn't technically a spy movie but it kind of was it kind of was but then you know you, you sort of the fighting styles and all that from the born movies you know where it's all the cameras all sort of in close and all yeah. personal and that. Pretty much every movie's doing that now. But uh, fucking James Bond is. You know with the fighting styles and sort of Casino Royale. That was more born than it was, was James Bond. You it kind of so. broke the mold. It showed you that you didn't have to be far away firing a gun, or you know you could get up close and personal. Aye. And you didn't have to be sort of throwing punches and having the sort of the pool ball hitting the pool ball noise for a fist 
hit in the face kind of thing, you know. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, you know, again, you could you could make the point that the fighting scenes were like the choreographer, but you're still getting direction from the director. So I think. Um, well, the thing is as well. Paul, yeah, that's Paul why Green I put that. Grass, he also made that other Matt Damon movie, the the Green Zone. Yeah. The kind of the war one, and that that was a good yeah, film. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. He done that film about the the twin tower plane. He he made that film United ninety three or ah did he do that? I didn't yeah, he done he, that. He done that. I loved that movie. Yeah, that was well, good. exactly. And also, I know I don't I know you don't like it, but Elysium that was Paul Greengrass, wasn't it? No, was it Paul Greengrass? No, Elys- or was it the Elysium guy who did was District Nine. Yeah, that, that was him. That was Elysium. He did uh, the Tom Hanks one. Uh, the Tom Hanks one about the pirates. What the hell was that called? Captain Phillips. Oh yeah, yeah, he done that. Which was fantastic. Hell of a movie again. And he's on his way back to the Bourne franchise. So. He is. I'm happy with that. Yeah. After you know Bourne, whatever, with Jeremy Renner, I'm ready for for uh, Bourne, Matt Damon to come back. Bourne Hawkeye. Yeah. So yeah, Paul Greengrass. Um, my number. Two. Excellent choice. Excellent choice. My uh, my number two. This isn't necessarily my favourite British movie ever, but he is my favourite British director, and I think he's churning out some great stuff both on TV and in cinema. I went with Shane Meadows for This Is England. Now, I've seen the first This Is England movie, but I've not seen any more than that. Well, he, he's, he made the movie. He's done two two series on Channel 4. Shane Meadows is just one of those directors that if, if you could be... If there was any more of a topic that was just uncomfortable as fuck to put on screen, Shane Meadows, <laughs> Shane Meadows will deal with it. Yeah, and he'll yeah. he'll put it up there for everyone to see, and he he just does it so masterfully. Like he's he's just a brilliant director. I mean, fair I, enough. I mean, I love the I love the first movie. Uh, movie was great. You know, I, I can't remember what it was called. Was it This is England six, 64 or, or was no, it just no, this that, is England? That, that was the TV show. The, the movie was This is England, and then the TV show he done them. Um, this is England eighty six, and then he done This is England eighty eight, and he shortly apparently it's rumored that next year we're getting This is England ninety. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, Gary keeps on saying to me that he's going to bring the DVDs into work, but he keeps bloody forgetting. So. Oh, they're fantastic. Don't don't go into it in a light hearted mood. Just don't do that. Yeah. I remember that i remember the movie yeah i yeah it's not it's not one to watch when you're a bit down in the dumps and a bit seeking stuff oh not at all not at all but that's what he's good at he also i nearly took this as england off and put dead man's shoes on because that again was a fantastic movie with one of my favorite british actors that paddy considine i don't know this is england just nailed it was he in um born out i'll meet him as the sort of the newspaper fella hi the generic reporter who's about to die yeah and he doesn't he doesn't listen to born so he gets all dead and stuff yeah yeah he's a good actor uh He's, yeah, he's a great actor. If you ever want to sit and watch a good Paddy Constantine movie, um, again, don't watch it when you're down on the dumps. A movie called In America, absolutely right. fantastic. I watched it in the video shop and I wished that I never, because the next <laughs> the next three or four customers that came in were like, have you been crying? <laughs> so don't watch it when you're uh, down in the dumps. Right, right, okay, fair enough. <laughs> so yeah, I went with Shane Meadows. Brilliant director, fantastic director, as British as it comes, and yeah. Uh, hi, so before we get to my number one, and your number one, do you have any honourable mentions? I think all my honourable mentions was pretty much the type of people you're saying, the likes of Christopher Nolan, uh, Ridley Scott, didn't put Tony Scott in there, and I know that's what you're waiting for. I thought you were gonna, yeah. I know that's what you're waiting for at my number one, but I didn't, because the one I did put in there, just there was no way I wasn't putting in. I think I might know who you're going to put in there so I'm not going to mention him now no actually I think I think you'll be quite surprised is it Edgar Wright no oh, right, it okay, was cool. it was close to being Edgar Wright as well yeah. he, was, he, See, was... I, he was in my honourable mentions for Scott Pilgrim yeah definitely uh, I've not seen a lot of other stuff that he's done I don't think the likes of Edgar Wright, you could um, you could have had your Shaun of the Dead, yeah. Oh, of course, Shaun of the Dead, yeah. Yeah, Hot I, Fuzz, I you know, Hot Fuzz is a great film. I was never a big fan of Hot Fuzz. And I love then, Shaun of the Dead, though. And then on the TV, he done the TV show Spaced, yeah, which we are both massive fans of. Yeah, I think you got me out of that, actually, didn't you? Probably, probably. I, I loved Spaced. And I, I wanted to put Tony Scott in, but... What do you put in for Tony Scott? Well, I actually did have him on my original list for Crimson Tide because that's my favourite Tony Scott movie. So see, that's what I mean though. Like I looked at Tony Scott and I'm like, right, even going back to the early days with the likes of Top Gun and Days of Thunder, two classic movies. Mm-hmm. And then you've got the likes of your Crimson Tides, then you've got your likes of your, your Man on Fire. Oh, of course, it's yeah, Do- Domino. I love Domino. It was a great film. The remake of Pelham One Two Three, which wasn't amazing. But but it was still 
fucking good. Mm-hmm. What would I put on and to what would I have to drop? Fuck True Romance. You know what I mean? Ooh, I've got that from Love Film. I've not watched it yet though. Oh, True Romance is amazing. I've seen it before, just not for a long time. So. Enemy of the State. What Tony Scott movie do you put on there? For me, I mean, I love, uh, I love Man on Fire, um, Enemy of the State, and all that. For me, it's still Crimson Tide though. I love that movie. Crimson Tide is a fantastic film. I'll give yeah. you that. My biggest worry when the man died, God rest his soul, but my biggest worry was, is Denzel going to be able to make any more movies? So, you're number one. My number one is Alfred Hitchcock, Rear Window. Is he British? Wow. Of course he's fucking British. You think that? Wow. You didn't know Alfred Hitchcock was British? You, you're not on the game that... On the game? <laughs> you're not... <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want to be on the game, mate. <laughs> You're not wow. paying me for this, so no, I'm not on the game. It's a bit ironic, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you're not on the ball. <laughs> you're not on the ball tonight at all. He said after just calling you a prostitute. I'll be completely honest with you. Be completely honest. I had no idea he was British. That is a new one on me. That's shoddy. But then I'm not. I'm not a massive Alfred Hitchcock fan, so. No, no, I know. Um, and that's a shame that people don't sort of tend to watch it now watch his movies now i mean you know i, I bought the box set i think it was last year i bought it and i, I rewatched and the, the, i rewatched them well it wasn't every single movie that he'd ever made it was like sort of the classics and I yeah. think it was like there were 15 movies or something like that and there are some dodgy ones don't get me wrong there are they're not all masterpieces or anything for the most part he made he made every movie was a classic for the most part yeah Pretty much, I mean, you've got like, you know, you've got Rear Window, which I'll come back to in a second. You've got, obviously, you've got Psycho, mm-hmm. you've got The Birds, you've got Rope, you've got Vertigo. Oh, God. Um, the Man Who Knew the man who knew Too Much, which is a good movie. That's like a spy movie. Yeah. Um, and that's a hell of a movie. It's, it's kind of, but his movies were sort of, it was like sort of black comedy. Yeah. Mostly black comedy. Like Psycho, you can't really call that a comedy. Uh, same with The Birds, but like... Um, the Vince Vaughn version was a comedy. Oh, God. Yeah, it was a word for word remake, wasn't it? Word for word, scene for scene remake. Pretty oh. much. And was it Anne Hesh? Yes. Playing the oh. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me of that. Um, but the reason I picked Rear Window is that was actually the very first Hitchcock movie that I ever saw. Um, so uh, it, it's basically it's about a guy who's um, play, uh, the the actor is James Stewart. It's about a guy who's sort of he's broken his leg. He's wheelchair bound. And, you know, obviously he's housebound as well. So uh, he's basically entered, sort of filling his days by spying on his neighbours, which is why it's called Rear Window. He witnesses a murder in the building opposite him. And so it's sort of, it's all about that. Basically, he's sort of trying to convince everybody this is what he's seen. And so his girlfriend is trying to help him prove it and all that. And it's just brilliant. It's just, it's so fucking good. Yeah, I've I've, I've seen Rear Window, not, not for a long, long time, but I did see it and I, yeah. I, I remember liking it. I mean, as far as... Hitchcock goes. I've seen some of the biggies, not so much the little ones. Like Ver- I've yeah. seen Vertigo, I've seen Rear Window, obviously, and they kind of remade Rear Window not so long ago. Yeah, didn't they do that? Was it not Shire? Yeah, it was with Shire. It was called Disturbia. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, honestly, I didn't watch it. Right off Shire, right off Shire, completely. If you must, Disturbia is a good film. Yeah. Disturbia is doesn't quite relate as as well as as well as Rear Window did, but it was a good film. But Rear Rear Window is a great film. I remember that one. Yeah, you must have seen Psycho. Yeah, I've seen Psycho, obviously. Yeah, preferred the Vince Vaughn version. <sighs> it's got Anne Hesh in it, man. Yeah, well, you can't go wrong. I mean, Six Days, Seven Nights, man. Come on. People mention that film. You <sighs> mention that film, and I just think of fanboys. <laughs> <laughs> Harrison Ford can do no wrong. Oh dear. Hey. So my number one is actually not one director, but it's two directors, and right. they were part of a group of some of the funniest men in British history as far as I'm concerned. To be fair, I don't like a lot of their films, but this one I loved. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Right. I mean, as far as comedies go, I've kind of got two comedies that I just go to for a laugh any time of the day. That's Airplane and Holy Grail. Really? Right. I, I love Holy Grail. Not a big fan? No, I'm not. But it's just all, it's just quintessentially, it's, I, it's I, I everything just, I, we I are. I can never get away with Monty Python. Don't get me wrong, the kind of the Monty Python Flying Circus TV show was never interested in. Don't mind the life of Brian, it's quite funny in bits. But mostly because they're poking fun at Christianity, and that's oh, yeah. always that's, that's always, always funny. Fun, yeah. <laughs> the um the now for something completely different, not that bothered with. Holy Grail slays me 
every time. It's like there's not a bad scene in that film. It just goes from good joke to good joke to good joke, and I, lo- I love it. Well, fair enough. I mean, it's just, uh, I, I did, I think I bought it on video or something back in the day. I, I just, I mean, I, uh, I love uh, John Cleese, as you know. Yeah. Uh, I like Michael Palin. Um, I can't really remember any other other ones. But yeah, I mean, I just, I could never ever, I couldn't get away with uh, Monty Python. Thing is, you, you remember the the John Cleese movie, um, Wanda? A Fish Called Wanda. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. I loved that. And that's kind of Monty Python-y a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's kind of what he was. Sort of slapstick. He was sort of breaking away from Python, but he was kind of taking some of his mates with him, just not all of them. Because I'm yeah. sure... Terry Gilliam. I mean, I put Terry Gilliam on there because, he, as directors go, he's he's a phenomenal director. But he kind of went off to do the American thing and started doing like Twelve Monkeys and all that kind of film. Brazil, you know, he's made some cracking films. But as far as his career goes, Monty Python. I just Monty love. Mon- I love Monty Python. <laughs> Fair enough, you know. And the Holy Grail. I could just put that on any time of the day. And I will laugh my ass off. And it's it's such stupid <laughs> comedy. But then Soul's Airplane. Yeah. And I'm really into that kind of... I mean, I, I quote Airplane all day long. I could also quote Holy Grail all day long. I prefer Airplane quotes, though. See, that's another one. I'm not, I do. I mean, I liked uh, Leslie Nielsen. He was in Airplane, right? Yeah. Aye, because it was the same guy that did Naked Gun. Uh, yeah, he was, director. A, he was on the same kind of... Aye. Kinda, he wrote Naked Gun. I don't think he directed it. I mean, I love the Naked Gun movies. Absolutely love the Naked Gun movies. Um, which, again, I think it's the same sort of humour, kind of, as as um, Holy Grail. But I just... I, I don't know. I just could never get away with them. It's very much you, you have your English sort of deadpan kind of humour and you have your American just outrageously stupid humour but they're yeah. both technically the same thing. So I, I went with Terry Gilliam and Terry Jones for Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Fairly. And that's our top five Brit flicks. And yeah. I can't, I can't believe not once and even in our honourable mentions we didn't even mention you know Stanley Kubrick but to be fair I think he's a bit overrated. Yeah I mean the only one I could I would mention it would be The Shining. Shining's great, yeah. I've never seen Clockwork Orange because I, I, I've just I've seen bits of it and it looks just trippy as fuck and I don't really fancy it. I do like Clockwork Orange, but again, it's one of those ones that people talked about it so much that when you sit down and watch it, you're kind of like, what is the fuss? Uh, yeah. What is the fuss? Yeah. That's the top five for the 365 Flicks podcast. If you, okay. If you want to hit us with your top five or let us know about your top five or tell us that ours is crap get yourself on facebook and twitter you know where to find us let's move on to the big debate here we go Here we go. I'm a little bit nervous, actually. I won't lie. <laughs> the tension's been building up. You just don't. Yeah, you just, just don't want to lose. That's your problem. Well, I don't because let's just put it out there. The the loser has to do. Do we actually want to do this? Do we want to do this or? So through the week, I came up with a little bit of um, a little bit of a, a forfeit for the loser. Basically, other than the Iron Man Dark Knight Rises debate in the past podcasts, we have slayed Will Smith and his career specifically one movie and that is wild wild west so the forfeit that i put forward for the loser of this debate was that they would come back in the next episode and they would do a verse from wicked wild wild west chris wasn't happy enough with that and wanted to make it slightly more embarrassing (laughs) (laughs) it then became wicked wild wild west as performed by eric cartman in south park which you can hear a couple of episodes back. I used it as like an interlude into another section. Are we really going to go down that road? You know what? I I, uh, I I can't see me getting through it without pissing myself laughing. That's the thing. Because I listened to it on Friday afternoon before I finished work. I was pissing about scanning stuff and all that nonsense. I just started thinking it on my phone on YouTube. And I was sat there fucking bloody laughing like a bastard. So I'm up for doing it. But I don't know how far into it I would get. <laughs> without fucking breaking down so I think we'll have to do the episode and then record it off to the side because <laughs> it might I take a few I think we'd have takes. to do that bit at the end of the night after we've had quite a few beers because I'm not doing that sober I'll definitely be putting the beers in me on that night <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we'll so go I ahead. think we should do that because 
Yeah, on that on that episode, I forget which episode it was. It was the episode about the favorite songs, movie m- songs. Movie songs, yeah. And I put Wild Wild West in my. I think it was number five. <laughs> so, uh, but then I was out walking the dog, listening to the episode, and you put that as as the sort of in between the in between the sections. You put it in there, and I was walking along just pissing myself yeah i think I, th- I think it needs to be eric cartman the thing the thing i like about that is that's the sort of thing that i put in the podcast specifically for you and i <laughs> it's it's not really for anyone else i'm just doing it for my own sort of gratification so if it gets a chuckle from someone else i'm happy but it's oh, for us well to fight anybody to listen to that and not laugh at it so i think that should be the forfeit but we'll just it, it could be it could end up being a bloopers reel so <laughs> I'm alright with that, definitely. The debate so is the debate. Iron Man 3 versus Dark Knight Rises, which, to be honest, is a, a far more superior movie. Well, it's not. Right, okay, let's start. Let's start by saying, right, they're both okay movies. They both could have been a lot better than, than what they were. Yes, yes? I'll, I'll, I'll definitely I'll concede on that, yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask everybody out there on the Facebooks and the Twitters to decide who wins based on our arguments that we're about to put forward. Yep. So base this on the movie, not the debate. No, base it on the debate, not the movie. Okay, the debate, not the movie. So if you if you are want to get involved and you do want to let us know who who put, puts the the better argument across, like the man says, Facebook, Twitter, three six five flicks, let us know. I've got a funny feeling we'll get maybe two people right back. Let's hope it's not probably. A, let's, probably. Let's yeah. hope it's not just a draw. So do we have to do a duet if it's a draw? Never that. Oh, that's just never going to happen. I'll I'll do the Cisco parts from the Wild Wild West proper version. Right. Yeah, you see, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do the Carmen one, because I can't sing for shit. So. <laughs> Neither can Will Smith. <laughs> do you want to start with your diatribe against? You can start with ripping apart Dark Knight, and then I'll I'll defend it. Okay. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> Take a bit sip. Have my beer. Okay, so the Dark Knight Rises. Right, so I watched this earlier on again. And I was trying to think of new things to complain about, but I couldn't really think of anything new. It was just all the same stuff that annoyed you from before. The first point I would make, right, is the whole movie just screams of a a, a writer and director who didn't know what the fuck to do because of what happened with Heath Ledger. And because of that, the movie is flawed to fuck and it's a mess. So that would would be the first point I I would put across, you know... Uh, you have got some good action scenes in there. You've got a good villain in Bane, not Talia, no. Bane, you've got a good villain, good sol- solid villain, good solid actor. You know, the action set pieces on the plane, for example. That's about it, really. Um, no, I would say the, the action set piece where it's the first showdown between Batman and Bane is pretty good, yeah. you know. Yeah. But other than that, the movie is just a fucking mess. So we start off um, eight years, eight fucking years after the events of the Dark Knight. So you've got this, and this, this is this is what sort of kind of thingied me. It just they didn't know what to do after the guy that played the Joker so damn well died. Obviously, the Joker was going to be in the sequel, you know, the third yeah. movie in the trilogy. I think that's a given. Yeah, after the Joker, after Heath Ledger died, it was like, what, what, what are we going to do? So it's eight years later. All that build up, all that bloody brilliant build up at the end of the Dark Knight, where you know the Joker's kind of been locked locked up. He was going to be taken to Arkham and all that. Then you've got Harvey Dent who sort of goes about killing everyone and stuff like that. <laughs> um, and then at the end of the movie, they end it with a fucking cliffhanger. They end it with a cliffhanger that Batman's taking the blame for for Harvey Dent. You know killing everyone and uh he, he's he's on the run because they can't have harvey dent as a bad guy but there was that that was the sequel to that was going to be so bloody good you know batman was doing his, he was still doing his thing he was still fighting crime but he was being hunted by the police yeah you know and that was going to be it was going to be so good but no they fast they, they, they fast forward they just fast forward to skip out eight years Eight years of, well, not Batman, because Batman quit that night. So, you know, Wayne Manor is a wreck. And this is, th- th- this bit annoyed me. Wayne Manor is a wreck in in, uh, in The Dark Knight, because of the fire with Ra's al Ghul and everything. Yeah. 
So at the end of Batman Begins, we're going to start rebuilding it and everything. And then the Dark Knight is still being rebuilt. So why, why would you bloody, if you've quit that night, why would you still have them build the Batcave? And what contractors did you use? Because it's Batman. Mm-mm. He's got to have his Batcave. That's not allowed. No, nope, that's not allowed. That's not allowed. It's not my defence, but he's got to have his Batcave. But, but he's not Batman anymore. He's retired. I don't think they ever say he's not Batman anymore. I think they... Well, he did. He, because he just... eight years later... Fucking Bruce Wayne is a homeless rich person with a homeless rich person's beard and a homeless rich person's fucking walking cane. <laughs> so he's not Batman anymore, he's fucked. So why then would he still complete the Batcave? That's just a little thing. Just just a little thing of many. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to check my notes. So <laughs> yeah, so homeless Bruce Wayne, that was actually my note. Um, right, okay. So we get into the story and all that. <sighs> so the first thing is like... Obviously, Bane comes back and all that, uh, which is fine. The next point I want to make is Bruce Wayne and Alfred are so fucking whiny. They are so whiny and fucking just depressing. You know, in the Dark Knight, they were sort of hitting off each other. And, you know, even at the darkest point of the movie where Bruce, like the Joker, was holding the city to hostage and, and Bruce Wayne was about to go and turn himself into the police and all that. And they're sort of walking through the, you know, the undergroundy thing. Yeah. Where they had, where they had the uh, bat suit and all that. But they're sort of walking along, heading off each other, and you know, like Alfred is going, "I, I did bloody tell you," and all that. You know, it was funny. It was a bit of comedy in there. But all they do is cry. Fucking all Alfred does is cry and fucking whine and piss and moan. And you know, he says to Bruce Wayne, "I, I want you to get back into the world." But the second he fucking does that and becomes Batman again, he's not happy either. Christ on a bike. Because. <laughs> Crack on. Next, the hot head. This is bollocks. This that that whole thing. You know, we've we spoke earlier on in the podcast about Christopher Nolan doing the likes of Inception, the likes of Prestige, which is good, good movies. He knows how to do a movie and not to fucking ram stuff down your throat, and punch you in the face with the fact that this guy's going to be fucking Robin. <laughs> okay. So the fact the fact that they keep on calling him Robin. No, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. The fact that they keep on calling him a hothead and, and there, there's a scene later on in the film where where uh, Bane has taken over and, and one of the like army guys that comes into the city who ends up getting hung, shot then hung, he goes, oh, do you want to dial it back there, officer? No, I don't want to fucking dial it back. Fuck you. Um, I'm a hothead, all right? He wanted, he wanted to do Robin without doing Robin. Yeah, but he just failed miserably. It was crap. The fact that... They, um, uh, you know what? If if they hadn't had that stuff in there, <sighs> the, I know that they were setting him up, you know, to, to be a bit Bruce wayne and stuff, only not rich. But they didn't need that. They, they, he didn't need to put that in there, get this hot head out of there. The fucking... The commissioner has just gone down into the sewer and there's been a fucking explosion and he wants to go down and rescue him. Somebody get this hot head out of here. What the fuck is that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, okay. the next thing, why is the police commissioner out in the field going down into sewers? You wouldn't get Frank Reagan doing that, Kev. <laughs> You're not using the Frank Reagan fence. I am. <laughs> He'd send Jamie down there instead. You wouldn't get Frank Reagan doing that. Jamie, who incidentally is in the movie. Yes, he is. But I don't, why, why is the police commissioner out in the field? That just wouldn't happen. Yeah, okay. I, I, can, I can see that. So, a bit further out in the movie, it's just after Bane has exploded everything with magic explodey concrete um <laughs> quite how he got the explodey concrete onto the bridges i'm not really sure and also and also what i thought about was how did he explode the field you know the uh like the american football stadium how did he explode the field because he's only been there six months presumably the stadium's been there for a little bit longer than that maybe that's by the by so you're gonna you're gonna send the entire police force underground to hunt for Bane. You're not gonna you're not gonna leave any officers above, you know, just in case like me and you are planning the bank robbery that day and there's no police left. You've basically got Robin and you've got the police commissioner who's in hospital all bust. So Robin Robin is the only police officer in this city that day because the rest of them are on the ground. Okay. Would you really do that? If you're this big wartime police commissioner commandery fella? Well no. No. Because it's it's very much stated by the asshole um, police person at the start of the movie that he's um, a, a peace commissioner. I know he was he was wartime, but now it's peacetime. So no, he doesn't say that. He 
says something to that he said he, they're talking at the very start of the movie uh, where he's doing his little speech and stuff when we've just before we meet homeless Bruce Wayne and he said uh, you know they, they say like oh you know he, he was a he was a great commissioner and he goes oh yeah but that was wartime so you've got this big experienced police commissioner from wartime and you're going to send your entire police force of I think they said 3,000 men 3,000 men underground yeah okay yeah Aye. Yeah, yeah. You've got so, that one. I have got that one. On that note, why does Bane keep them alive? Why does Bane give the police officers food and water? Because it's a 12A. Yeah, but he doesn't mind killing fucking helpless bloody American football players when he explodes the pitch. Collateral damage. Pish. <laughs> okay, so we'll skip ahead again after that um, into the pit. Come on, what's wrong with the pit? So, <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, we've got the scene. We've got the you know, the good scene, the fighty scene where Bane breaks Batman's back and then takes him to the pit. He does quite a good monologue there where he says, you know, <sighs> was it once Gotham is gone and all that remains are the ashes, then you have my permission to die or something. Some pretty much the gist. Excellent writing. That was a good monologue. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, fine. But, 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 um, there's the, 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 the wonder drug for a broken back whereby if I fall down tomorrow, um, uh, you know, and, and, break my back all i need to do is give you a phone and say right kev give me a punch and and then and then stay there until you can move your feet and stand that's been scientific- really that's been scientifically proven that that can work that's bollocks that's utter shite yeah that's just yeah okay okay <laughs> look at you all, okay, all pleased with so- yourself <laughs> I, 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 I i'm 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 quite enjoying this i was a little bit nervous before i'm quite enjoying this now i feel i'm venting um so again right so bruce wayne escapes the pit we're told that that the nuke is gonna go off in was it like 10 days or something like that so my next big gripe in the movie is that he get he escapes the pit in the middle of nowhere in whatever sort of deserty looking country it is no id no money uh doesn't know where the fuck he is but he has time to get back to gotham in 10 days he has time to fucking draw a big flamey bat on the side of a building without anybody seeing him and then find his way back into Gotham. That's not explained. Because he, he knows he, he knows where he's in. He knows how again. Gotham's his playground. Yeah, that's shite. Um, that was that was my next sort of big gripe is the pit thing. The pit thing annoys me. Possibly worse than Hothead, but only just. The next thing is Bane's Gotham doesn't look all that bad. What do you mean Bane's Gotham doesn't look all that bad? It doesn't look that bad, you know. There's nobody going about. They fucking break everyone out of the prison. And then the next few scenes that you see of of Gordon and, and Robin and all that going about. There's nobody going about. It's just them and the fucking trucks. So it doesn't look that bad. It's quiet. It's peaceful, if anything. I mean, yeah, there's a nuclear bomb going about. But that could be the case of anything. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll uh, sort of wrap it up with one more gripe. And it's another biggie. Is the ending of the movie. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. So you've got Alfred... Well, there's like it's kind of like Lord of the Rings. There's several ends to the movie. Um, you've got Robin finding the fucking Batcave and um, whatever. And then you get Alfred sitting in the cafe in what it... Was it Florence or Venice or something? And then, you know, they teased it earlier on in the movie. You know, they basically told you in the first fucking half hour how it was going to end. That, you know, he had a sort of fantasy when he was over there that he would see, he would look up and see Bruce Wayne, but they wouldn't say anything to each other. Um, now, at this point, obviously, they've set off the nuke six miles, just, just, just six miles out, so everybody's fine. I'm sure there's no fucking nuclear fallout or anything like that. It'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, a bit of paracetamol would be all right. Yeah, of course. So yeah. Somebody will just punch them. <laughs> I'd just give him a punch. Just give him a punch in the... The bit where you're all nuclear poisoned. Definitely. Be fine. Be all right. Um, <laughs> so then, you know, you're, at that point, you kind of, you think, ish, that Batman has sacrificed himself to get the nuke out of the city. And then the very, you know, the final scenes of the movie, you've got Alfred sits down in Venice, say, at the cafe, and then, and then they show you Bruce Wayne. And that still irritates me to fuck. Because, again, going back to... Movies like The Prestige, movies like Inception, where he lets you sort of kind of make up your own mind. You know, he's an intelligent movie maker. For it to end it like that is just a kick in the balls to me. Like, let, I've said it before, I'll say it one more time and then that's it. I'm not fucking stupid. Let me decide 
if Alfred is seeing Bruce Wayne or not. Have him look up at the ca- look up at the camera and then cut to black and let me fucking decide. So to sum up, uh, so yeah, the f- the film just it screams we didn't know what we wanted to be. And the way I'll end it is why Iron Man three is better than The Dark Knight Rises is they knew what they wanted it to be. Interesting you say that. Interesting you use that phrase. Okay. Uh, right. I'll finish off my thought. It was directly after Avengers Assemble, the first movie after, so they were dealing with the fact that Tony Stark had died and all that. And as we've just seen Age of Ultron, where you've got the, the robots flying about autonomously, mm-hmm. and obviously Ultron itself, to me, you don't have that without the events of Iron Man 3. Right. So that's why Iron Man 3 is better than The Dark Knight Rises. You go. In in Dark Knight Rises defence, and you you put a, you put forward a lot of to be fair a lot of the things that I also do kind of gripe about. Some things I think is just being a bit of a turd about. I think the whole thing with him being called a hothead, you know, they were pretty much building him up to become Robin. It's something that I've fought from day one. Like I've 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 not wanted it to be that. But it is. He's, he's fucking Robin. Simple as. <laughs> I have noticed you've started calling him that now, yeah. I, I will... It's a bit of a harsh defence to use, and you used it at the start of your argument. Your argument was the whole thing that he fled, I died, and Chris Nolan went, oh shit, what are we doing? Because you have to assume that any good movie maker, when he's making that second movie, he knows what the end game is in the third movie. So he would have written at least a good portion of that third movie. A good portion of it. Yeah. Which is why the end of The Dark Knight is kind of rushed. It's why he's left alive, hanging there, because obviously he's going to come back. It's why Harvey Dent dies. Why the fuck turn him into Harvey Dent for 20 minutes just to kill him? Yeah, I know. See, that was a that was the thing about that movie as well. Uh, you know, I agree with you. They, they built him up uh, to become Two-Face, and then he was just, he was just getting into Two-Face, and then... Yeah. So, yeah, I would have loved to have seen a Joker-Harvey Dent team up in the... The Dark Knight Rises. But... So my my, my defence is very much the, the Heath Ledger defence. If he hadn't have died, we would have been seeing a whole different movie. Yeah, I agree. Ha- having said that, having said that, Dark Knight Rises brings everything all the way back round. From that first movie when he's being trained with Ra's al Ghul, to the fact that Bane is part of the League of Assassins, coming back to finish off Ra's legacy. I don't give a fuck that Talia is being the puppet master. I don't care about that shit. Because we're going to deal with that in a minute. This was never going to be an easy movie to make. It was never going to be an easy movie. He had to change his whole strategy and his whole plan. And as you've said to me in the past on other podcasts and in various conversations, the silly idiot started writing Interstellar at the same time. That's never a good idea. Don't be doing that. Finish the movie you're on. Well, he got the writer's block. He couldn't. The reason he started doing that is because he couldn't think of what the fuck to do with it. And I get that. That's just that's just what I read. It might be bollocks. That's just what I read. It does it does show up in the movie that they kind of didn't really know what they were doing in certain parts. Certain characters are wasted a little bit. Like you say, Alfred doing his big U-turn. Let's not forget, he'd hung up the cape and cowl, right? But he was still a rich man. He, he still had all his toys and gadgets. You know, that's why he has the bat cave underneath. Because he's got the money to do it. So why the fuck not? And he's doing this what was it, this clean energy sort of thing that, you know, technically they sort of semi-ripped off Avengers. You know, there's yeah, that, that's true. And, and they, they ended up using... The, don't go there Didn't with me. Did Dark Knight come first? Don't go there with me because we're going to talk about that in a minute. All right. Fucking hell. You said it first. When we get to my Iron Man argument. Okay. There are gripes with the movie. It does have the odd plot hole. I'm fine with Bane breaking his back and I'm fine with the pit. Because the pit made him face everything and made him, but he needed to recover. He wasn't quite the Batman he used to be. So when he's in the pit, he learns how to be the Batman he needs to be again. Oh, he does a few press ups. He learns what it's going to take mentally, not just physically, but it learns mentally what it's going to take to defeat Bane. They pussy out and they let Catwoman do her thing with Bane. Bygones. I'm, I'm fine with that. The whole thing with Talia is again, like I'm saying. They're bringing it back round. Raz started the whole thing when he started to train Bruce Wayne. Talia tried to finish the whole thing by killing Bruce Wayne and annihilating Gotham after getting herself pregnant with his bat batter. <laughs> the ending. Okay. I'll deal with the ending. I 100% wholeheartedly agree with you. 
and it's the one thing about Dark Knight Rises I have always agreed with. I've always agreed that they should never ever have shown him sitting there with her. Chris Nolan's a far better director than that. He doesn't need to do that shit. And as you say, Agreed. punching us in the face and hammering at home, he doesn't do that. It's not his style. I can only assume that that was some sort of studio interference. I would like to think that wasn't him. I would like to think that. But the man didn't become complacent. He might have got a bit of the writer's block and he went away and started writing Interstellar, which when you watch it, that is the movie that shows. That is the movie that fails the most. Interstellar is a steaming pile of turd. (laughs) <laughs> I've not seen it yet everybody ranted and raved about how great Interstellar was that movie suffered because of the fact he was making Dark Knight Rises not Dark Knight Rises suffered it never suffered it was always going to suffer from the Heath Ledger thing that... yeah I, I would agree with you there I don't think it suffered because he was writing two movies at once I think it just it was because he didn't know what you know when you know tragically Heath Ledger died and that he didn't know you know and you're right it is a case of how the fuck do you you know write a write a whole new thing from scratch and and that's why I believe he went with the whole bringing it all the way back round full circle you know the sins of the past as in the the Batman begins when he when the League comes to to Gotham to destroy it. Then the League comes back and Dark Knight rises. It's the sins of the past, which by the way, Iron Man three also does. But that's not the only thing they rip off the Dark Knight rises, and we'll get there. So all I'm gonna say is just cut the movie a little bit of slack. He had a big big problem to deal with, and that was the fact that his main top bad guy, who was never gonna be beaten never going to be beaten he died but he did replace him with tom hardy who puts in a fucking sterling performance Mm -hmm. maybe not tom hardy's best performance to date but he fucking does it he does it justice well he didn't he didn't really get a chance to do a lot of acting it was you know there's there's acting there there's acting it's Uh... a it's a lot of crossing his eyes and stuff but it's acting it's Mm. it counts and let's be honest that voice the voice is fantastic. It's better on the Blu-ray than it was in the cinema. <laughs> Definitely. Because in Definitely. the cinema, in, in the cinema, up until the football stadium bit, I wasn't able to understand the fucking thing he was saying. And then it just all of a sudden changed for some reason. So. So I, I could sit here and I could defend, I could defend Dark Knight Rises all day, and I love defending Dark Knight Rises, because yes, it has its flaws, but they're excellently covered up by the fact that Nolan is a genius. And the movie is fantastic. I'm sorry, but that movie doesn't show Nolan as being a genius. How how would you have ended that movie? That that tr- No, sorry, not that movie. That trilogy. You had Batman Begins, which was phenomenal. You had The Dark Knight, which was amazing. Far better than Batman Begins. How do you end a trilogy like that? It's the Godfather scenario. Godfather 1, excellent. Godfather 2, way better. They were never going to top it. They couldn't top it. For a start, don't skip forward eight years. Still have Tom Hardy in there. But you know what? I mean, you know, okay, take it, take it back, and have the have it meeting up with the the first movie with the League of Shadows and all that. Fine, but it's Raza Ghul's daughter. She should have been way better than that. And she had a fucking awful death. She didn't have a good death. I'll give you that. She didn't have a good death. The thing with the double act, the thing with Bane, and the thing with, with Talia is that. Bane is very much physically outsmarting Batman and kicking shit out of him. And we see that by the fact that he breaks his back. But he's not the smartest guy on the planet, is he? He's a terrorist for hire, But basically. no, that, that's bollocks as well, because uh, uh, I did read this in the comics. He actually does outsmart Bruce Wayne, and he does figure out on his own that Bruce Wayne is Batman. We're not talking about the comics here, we're talking about the movie, alright? Let's just stick to the movie. You want to talk comics, we'll talk comics. So you've got him taking him down physically, battering him physically, breaks his back physically, and then you've got Talia, who mentally is destroying the man. She basically infiltrates the board of directors, single-handedly gets Bane into the building to take down everyone else. She is mentally destroying him. Because of her actions getting Bane to take down Wall Street is how he loses all his money. It's how Bruce Wayne becomes a poor man. He has no money left. Oh, that's shite. That's bollocks. That would, that's fucking bullshit. <laughs> you call him bullshit on that one. I'm going to end it there because I could defend it all day and, and, and I, I will just... Not very well, then. I, I just defended it pretty fucking well and I blew all your shit out of the water. You really I, didn't. 
Buckle up for some pimpage, folks. Thank you all for checking out the 365 Flicks podcast, the podcast that loves dropping its verbal load all over your ear holes. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Podomatic, and musingsofageek.com. Why not drop by the Facebook page? And like us, share us, and drop us a comment. You'll find us at facebook.com forward slash 365flicks.com. Or you can even hit us up on the Twitter bird, twitter.com forward slash 365flickspod. Then of course there's the youtube channel for all those people who like to have some pictures to go along with the words get yourself on youtube type in 365 flicks and you'll find our playlist so why don't you like follow share rate review comment subscribe and repeat do you need something new and refreshing to listen to get your ass to musingsofageek.com where you can find such geeky and entertaining podcasts as history of bad ideas the hobi gang discuss all things geek in comics movies and tv in pretty much everyday life. Dark Angels and Pretty Freaks. Neil and Annalise discuss the geekier side of their lives. Tune in each week. That'll play a podcast with Matt and John. They cover the spectrum. Good luck on the live episode, guys. How is this movie? Dana was my first pod subscription, and I never looked back. He's interesting and informative, yet entertaining. Then, of course, there's the flagship show, Musings of a Geek Podcast. These guys cover it all. A lot of fun to listen to, I have to say. And, of course, you have Graphic Novice. It's all comics, all the time. You want to know about comics? Listen to this show. Before I leave you, I want to give a big shout out to William Mill, the creator of our guitar shredding intro. Do us a favour and show Will the love. Check his awesome video metal tracks at soundcloud.com forward slash girls melon. That's G-I-R-L-Z hyphen melon. If you like what you hear, why not go and check his videos on the YouTubes? Simply type in girls melon. Look for him on Facebook. Search for girls melon. Like, share, comment and show the love because I think we all agree talent deserves credit. And if you do happen to take some time out of your day to go and check out these guys whether it be the podcasts whether it be will's guitar shredding don't forget to let them know who sent you it was 365 flicks and now it's back to the lads at 365 flicks hq our vocal heroes of pissy opinion i want to take you back we're we're doing dark knight and we're doing iron man 3 and I would like to take you back to a bit of a simpler time. I want to take you back to 2012, basically, when Avengers Assemble came out. And Marvel finished this succession of movies, which they called Phase 1 in the MCU. And it was it was brilliant. It had, you know, it had a, hit a few bumps in the road. But for the most part, it was brilliant. And I would honestly say that is in most part thanks to the fact that Jon Favreau came out and made Iron Man. A fantastic, excellent mm-hmm. movie. He did. Definitely. Iron Man 1, stunning movie. They follow that up with Incredible Hulk which wasn't great. It was good, but it wasn't great. Then he brings out Iron Man 2, which again, wasn't great, but it was good. At the end of the day, you give Favreau a pass. What you don't do, once you've made a movie that makes 1.5 billion, like the Avengers, what you don't do is then become completely fucking complacent. And I know you say he went off to do something else, but if he wanted to make Iron Man 3, he should have made Iron Man 3. You don't give it to pissy fucking Shane Black, who makes the same fucking movie every time he makes a movie. He made, or he wrote, last Boy Scout, Long Kiss Goodnight, Lethal Weapon, all these movies involve three things. Do you know what those three things are? Go on. Have you got a laser pointing there, pointer there as well, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, shaking, shaking your pen about. Sorry. The three things that Shane Black always has in his movie is a quippy, quippy sort of narration, you know, that is self-assuming, self-referring, exactly like Iron Man 3 has. He always has Christmas in his movies. Lethal Weapon, Long Kiss Goodnight, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, Iron Man 3. He always has somebody kidnapped in his movies. See where I'm going here? Shane Black makes the same movie every time he makes a movie. Alright, okay. The man is quite good at doing dialogue because Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is one of my favourite movies out there, um, dialogue wise, like written wise, and it does also have Robert Downey Jr. in it. And he plays the fucking part really well. He also delivers a really good narration. So, you know, they hire him to make Iron Man 3. And what does Shane Black do? He thinks to himself, how the hell am I going to top Avengers? I can't top Avengers. So I will look over at another trilogy that has recently just ended and was pretty much almost perfect. Bar a few little things. That trilogy was the Dark Knight trilogy by Christopher Nolan. And then he says, I could do better than the Dark Knight Rises. I could do that. Iron Man 3, I put it to you, is a basic carbon copy of the Dark Knight Rises. So all those pissy little problems you have with the Dark Knight Rises actually appear in Iron Man 3 because Shane Black couldn't write a decent fucking script to save his life. You're on about it's 
skips eight years and Bruce Wayne is now a recluse or Batman is now a recluse. Well, at the start of Iron Man 3, Tony is now living in his basement and has pretty much given up the Iron Man mantle, so to speak, and is just making new Iron Man suits to defend the people around the world, as you say, appears in Age of Ultron. He doesn't really want to be Iron Man anymore, and let's be honest, at the end of the film, he isn't Iron Man anymore. He's done a clean slate, and guess what Bruce Wayne does at the end of The Dark Knight Rises? <laughs> See where I'm going here? I disagree, but on you go. You also have little bits like, you know, Jim Gordon gets ho- hospitalised in the movie, and the way they repay John Favreau for all the good work he done in Iron Man 1 and 2 is that they put Happy Hogan in the hospital. So... Tony Stark's best mate is in the hospital, and Jim Gordon is in the hospital. Probably Bruce Wayne's best mate as well. Sounds kind of familiar to me. You've been rehearsing this, haven't you? Oh yeah, yeah. I've got uh, this, I've sorry. got this shit locked down. I told you I was going a different angle. I've never uh, done the Iron Man three basically ripped off Dark Knight angle. I've never done that, and it's quite it's refreshing. Wrong, it's wrong. It's, wrong, it's quite refreshing. Other ways, there's little things like his mansion blows up, and then afterwards Pepper walks over and she finds the Iron Man mask on the floor, and it's all like cut to pieces and it's all broken and stuff, and she picks it up and looks at kind of reminiscent of when Bane breaks Batman's cowl you know just just a little thing that came to mind then of course you've got the fact that the Mandarin isn't actually the villain in the movie they get the Mandarin who's a wicked 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 bad guy terrorist but he's not a bad guy terrorist he's somebody's whipping boy much like Bane is to Talia (sighs) you know there's a lot of similarities going here and let's remember Dark Knight Rises came out first. No, it didn't. So... No, it didn't. Yes, it Iron did. Man 3 came out first. No, Dark Knight Rises came out first. It came out a good five or six months first because I've done my homework, as you say. So, mm-hmm. when you say... And this is a quote, by the way. I'm quoting you from about ten minutes ago. When you say, they, what was it, they knew what they wanted it to be. You're right, they did. They wanted it to be Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> And then there's the whole thing that, as we've said, they pussy out and they let Bane get killed by Catwoman. Funnily enough, Aldrich is killed by Pepper Potts. Because let's forget, Tony Stark isn't even Iron Man in this movie. Pepper kills the bad guy. Tony literally does fuck all this whole movie. Apart from, you know, like you say, Bruce Wayne is a whiny little cunt. So is Tony Stark. He is a bit of a whiny cunt, I'll agree with you there. You also have that little bit in the movie where, you know, you're saying he gets sent to the pit to recover. You kind of have that in Iron Man 3 when they blow up the thing. So he goes off to this little pissy town in Tennessee to live with this little boy called Short Round (laughs) and and recover. It's kind of what Bruce Wayne does in Dark Knight Rises. Just saying. Right. Well, just the uh, thingy on your piss on your bonfire there. Iron Man 3 was released on 24th of April 2013, and Dark Knight Rises was released on 19th of July. Oh shit, 2012. Damn. Right, moving on. <laughs> I did my homework. I told Bugger you it. this. I told you. I oh, move on, shut up. That's almost a good year ahead of time. Yeah, so they had plenty of time to rip this script off. Then, of course, you have the fact that um, at the end of the movie, Bruce Wayne is presumed dead. And obviously, when the when the Malibu home is blown up, there's a paper that actually says Tony Stark presumed dead. Just a little, just a little thing that I, I noticed. Didn't really annoy me. I just noticed it, you know. And you keep going on about how he's a whiny little bastard. So the fuck is Tony Stark? Every two minutes he's having anxiety attacks. You know, he's like, Ugh. It's not every two minutes. He has two anxiety. He has two attacks in the whole movie. The, the effects of Avengers Assemble uh, fucked me up. Uh, man. But if you remember in Avengers Assemble when all that shit's going on, he's quipping away like a bastard. He's having a good time. He's flying around blowing up aliens. He's loving fucking life. And then in the next movie, He's all destroyed and doesn't want to be Iron Man anymore. Don't get me wrong. Going through that wormhole is going to affect you. So I'll give him that. But you don't become a self-obsessed idiot who no longer listens to ACDC and likes little boys. That just doesn't happen. Whoa, oh, hey, oh. And do I need to mention the fact that at the start of Dark Knight Rises, it begins in like this mid-air thing where... Bane's henchmen come in and they rip apart the plane to get the doctor out. You know, they, they, they fly in and they take the plane and get the doctor back, don't they? And then halfway through Iron Man 3, War Machine flies up to Air Force One, but it's not War Machine because it's Mandarin's little bitch, Killian's little bitch, who's a far better villain in this movie, by the way. Just a great villain there, James Badgedale. Full props to him. But he fly he flies in he flies into Air Force One and then like starts throwing everyone out the plane and just Tears apart Air Force One. Just another scene that basically looked like a rip-off of Dark Knight Rises. Better scene than Dark Knight Rises. Oh, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. If you want a movie that's all style and very little substance, in fact, zero substance, Iron Man's your movie. It is your movie. It's a shorter, more polished version of Dark Knight Rises. Dark Knight Rises just happens to have plot, you know, but you, you saw... Well, it fucking doesn't, does it? It has a... It has a, it has a bit of plot. It almost has too much plot. 
but you're too pissed off to realise it. Wow. Don't get me wrong. Iron Man 3, when I watched it last night, because I rewatched it last night and I rewatched Dark Knight Rises today, I found myself slightly more enjoying Iron Man 3 than I did the last time I watched it. And I found that it is, it isn't, it's a good film. It, you know, it's well made. Marvel know how to make good movies. Shane Black doesn't know how to write an action script to fucking save his life, which is clearly evident. They just got complacent because of all that Avengers money. They decided they could do whatever the fuck they wanted. Plus they had Winter Soldier coming up. They had Dark World which was a fucking turd. And they had Guardians of the Galaxy which I know everybody said was a risk. No way that movie was going to fail. It was fucking awesome. It was brilliant. It was. It could have failed though. You know if it... I just feel like Marvel knew what was coming and they knew what they'd done before. So they said, alright Johnny Fav, you want to go and make your Disney Jungle Book shite? You go make it. We're going to bring in Downey Jr's pal because he'll work for fuck all. That's all I'm saying. And Dark Knight Rises is just a way better movie. I suppose you could say, did you ever watch that Simpsons episode? Oh no, it was the South Park episode when Butters becomes evil Professor Chaos and he wants to like he coming up with evil plans to like take down the take down the town. Yeah. And Butters keeps on going, Simpsons did it. Well, I suppose yeah. what I'm trying to say is when I watched Iron Man three, Dark Knight Rises did it. And I'll end there. Right. I feel all de- Denny Crane right now. <laughs> Prosecution rests. Right, well. And I didn't even get into the fact that Trevor fucking Slattery didn't even need to go there. I really feel like I want to go there, but I'm not gonna. Go there if you want to go there. I, you know what I noticed? I did actually, I, I clocked it as I was doing like my research and I was looking through the IMDB and the wiki page. That character, Ben Kingsley, is actually credited as Trevor Slattery. So he's not even called the Mandarin in the credits anymore. I don't know if it's in the movie credits. It might be in the movie credits. In wiki and IMDB, he's just Trevor Slattery. A pissed up fucking Man U fan. <laughs> uh, and I didn't need to go there. And how, uh, how, <laughs> how about the fact, right, that, um, what's her name? Um, the, the girl, Maya, Maya Hansen, that he, he shags back in the day. Because obviously this movie also is a full circle movie. Because the things he does in the flashback, which is before Iron Man 1, are the things that cause the effect of Iron Man 3. It's, you know, it's also kind of... I suppose they kind of stole that from, from Batman as well. Yeah, a little bit. So anyway, he rides her, and then he's all like, I, I don't have time for you because I've got to go and be Iron Man. So later on, she comes back and she's all like, oh, I want to help you, I want to help Pepper. No. She's actually a baddie working for the baddie, just like the woman who kind of seduces Dark Knight Rises Bruce Wayne, Miranda Tate, who turns out to be Tally Al Ghul. So the two love interests in this movie are also villains. Wow. Indeed. So, Iron Man 3 is a shorter, little bit more polished version of Dark Knight Rises. But you can only t- polish a turd so much, can't you? Yeah. Uh, and you be that fucking smug fucking smile on your face. <laughs> You look like you've just been hammered. Yeah, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to be Alan Shorner as soon as you've been Denny Crane. Well, your main argument there was that the, you know, the events of the two movies were similar. Um, no, I'm, I believe I called them, um, I, I suppose I could say it was plagiarism. That's a big word. Okay, so, well, okay, so your, your main, you know, your main, your main point, I would say, you know, is that there are similarities, or if you want to go as full-on plagiarism, that's up to you. Um... That's bollocks, though, and I'll tell you for why. The two movies were being produced and developed right about the same time as each other. So unless there were fucking telephone calls between Shane Black and Christopher Nolan saying, what are you doing? What are you up to? Oh, I like this scene. What are you doing in that scene? Which I don't think would have happened. That's bollocks. That's your theory shot to hell. No, not necessarily. Why not? Because as you've just pointed out when you proved me right on which movie came first, Dark Knight Rises, because you did do that. You pretty much helped my whole argument. Well, I did because I was being a cocky cock. Because I kind of, uh, while you were speaking, I wasn't really listening to you. While you were speaking, <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> oh, no. I was listening. I was thinking of someone else. I, I did have a quick look, and I, I just looked at the sort of the, the. I didn't look at the year. I just looked at the dates, and I kind of yeah. thought, ha 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 ha, and then I ended up looking like a fool. Yeah, so... you pretty much did. I did, I did, I. Yeah, get your pen back out again. But you know, you helped my argument, and, and you even clarified that Dark Knight Rises came out a good year, almost a year, before Iron Man 3. So I would say the script was probably written a good, I don't know, maybe eight, nine months before that. So you've got a good 18 to 20 months before Iron Man 3. So no, I don't think they would have been written on well at the same time. Well, no, I think they would have. And I think Shane Black probably did give Christopher Nolan a phone and say, yeah, can I rip your movie off, mate? Probably didn't do that. Probably not in those words, but... What have you got for scene B? What, what's your big airplane scene? What's your answer for the end of the movie, Christopher? Oh, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do that, but in a different way. Okay, so, well, 
we'll agree to disagree there because I think you're wrong. I mean, you know, I think that they would have been in development around about the same time. You know, there's a lot more computer effects in Iron Man than there is in Dark Knight Rises. I think you'll agree. Well, yeah, of course. Aye, so sharp. So, you know, the, the post-production takes longer for a film like that than it does for Iron Man. Uh, for for uh, ah rewind yeah. post production takes longer for a film like Iron Man than it does for a film like The Dark Knight Rises because there's more physical effects in The Dark Knight Rises than there is in Iron Man Three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll give you that. So the movies were in development at the same time. So your theory that you know that he fucking plagiarized Christopher Nolan—that's just bollocks. That's fucking bullshit. Come on. Maybe maybe plagiarism is too strong of a word. Right. I'll tell you what. I'll accept your point that Shane Black makes the same kind of movie. You know, involving Christmas, involving a kidnapping. What mm-hmm. was your other one? Snap, snappy, snappy, overarching narration. But that's kind of what, you know, I mean, that's what happens in the dark world. You know, fucking, well, it's not Christmas, I know, but like Jane Foster gets kidnapped, all that. You know, it's just it's just a fucking story. It's just, it's just a part of storytelling. It's what, you know, the fucking damsel in distress and all that's that kind fine. of thing. These that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And I'll totally, I'm good with that, right? It is a generic story that goes into generic movies like Iron Man 3 happens to be but Marvel after having made phase 1 should not be resting on their laurels they should have been coming out with Iron Man 3 being an absolute kick ass Iron Man movie and let's not forget this was to be the last Iron Man movie I know they've rumoured Iron Man 4 it's not coming Uh, it's not going to happen no No. so this was to be the third in a trilogy so don't fucking don't pussy out and make a fucking flaccid cock of a movie go out and make a big erect beast of a movie just go for it but they didn't they just thought we'll just make a shitty movie and we'll throw some kick-ass effects in there because i will totally agree the effects are miles better in iron man 3 but it's just not enough right well you know what i think to defend it again right because that's what I'm going to do. Do you do you really want to anymore? Is, is that still the stance you're taking? It is, yeah. Don't question me. No, it's just what you spent the last 10 minutes doing. But yeah. Um, <laughs> I think my points about Dark Knight Rises were better than your points about Iron Man, though. We will let the people decide. Yeah, I'm not finished yet. Oh, oh fuck. Homie's got some defending to do. All right, defend your movie. Defend, defend your movie. I'm thinking... Um, <laughs> right, okay, so, well, I disagree completely about the whole fucking ripping it off. I know that you said that, the, the you know, that there are similarities, I can't de- I can't deny that, but you can't fucking sit there and tell me Shane Black just fucking got a hold of a Dark Knight Rises script and said, oh, I like that, I like that, I like that. Not the ending, I don't like that. You can't fucking sit there and tell me that, that's bullshit. He clearly did like the ending, though, because he kind of sort of almost done the same thing, just in a different way. No, he fucking didn't. Well, what did he do at the end? What did he do? He destroys all of his uh, suits in the... Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, God, that whole fucking thing. So he, d- he destroys all his suits, and then he goes to where the mansion used to be. I'm assuming it's where the mansion used to be, on the clifftop, and he's kind of he's got nothing now. It's a clean slate. I can't remember if he uses the term clean slate. He doesn't use the term clean but slate. But he uses the basic... He has nothing now, okay? He's ca- he's having to start fresh. That's not what he's saying in the movie. What, do, what does Bruce Wayne do? It's, that's not what he's saying in the movie. And then you... At and, the end of the Iron Man 3, that's not what he's and saying. And then the next time you see Tony Stark, the next time you see Iron Man is in Avengers Age of Ultron, and he's got fucking hundreds of suits again. He's got all these suits that he blew up at the end of Iron Man 3. But what they're the, not Iron Man. Suits. What was they're, the fucking They're like the Iron Legion. They're not Iron Man. But in Age of Ultron, he wears three, at least three different Iron Man outfits, Iron Man suits. It changes as the movie goes on. So he has multiple suits. So can you right. tell? Can you tell me for sure that he doesn't have a Mark Forty Two anymore? I didn't write it. Well, exactly. I don't think. Um, it, I don't think anybody really did. Christopher Nolan sent the script to Shane Black, and Shane Black said. Hmm, I like this. And I'm going to take your overarching story of the whole movie and do that with a little sprinkling of Marvel magic. Right, shut the fuck up for a second. Right, so, okay, so... <laughs> Me and Adam was going to risk your somehow, Is this you doing it now, is it? <laughs> I'm just get better, better rehearsing going in. I think maybe I, I'm kind of drawing a blank at the moment. I know what I want to say, I'm just drawing a blank because you kind of threw me with all your rehearsed stuff. Are you still in the shower this morning rehearsing that, eh? Pretty much. I believe you. Okay, so, right, right, okay. I said it before, I'm going to say it again. It's the first movie after Avengers Assemble, so you're going to have to deal with what happens in Avengers Assemble. So that's what happens in the movie. Tony Stark is a wreck. He fucking died. He flew into space and, you know, and all that, and he fucking died. So he's a bit of a wreck. So as for him not being Iron Man anymore, he fucking is still Iron Man. You know, he's he's bloody going about in the suit and all that. I, I mean, yeah, granted, there's not 
as much of Iron Man in that movie as there is in like Iron Man 2 and Avengers Assemble. Fine, I'll agree with that. But that's not what the movie was about. To me, the movie was showing us Tony Stark after the events of Avengers Assemble. And he's a fucking wreck. And he's building Iron Man suits as a way to cope, you know, uh, as a way to fucking cope, as a way to keep on going, because he's a fucking wreck. He's a, he's a piping hot mess. Exactly. Such a fucking shitline. Better than get that hot head out of here. I prefer get that hot head out of here. No, well, you're wrong. So, you know, we have we have the Mandarin. As with uh, as with you, with uh, whatever it was with Dark Knight Rises, you agreed with. I completely agree with you there. Um, they, com- they wasted that character. Ben Kingsley was sinister as hell as the Mandarin. He That would have been fucking amazing if they'd kept on going with that and not turned him into the bloody pisshead man you fan. I agree with you there completely. That's that's all. You know, before then he was actually quite a good villain. Oh, he was a great like, villain. You know, he was a good villain, and you know, Tony Stark says, uh, "My address is me, me, me." You know, come get me, kind of thing. After Happy gets put in the hospital, and uh, so you know, you got the big attack and all that, and you know, and set pieces wise, action wise, Iron Man three kicks the fucking ass out of Dark Knight Rises. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna disagree there because, like I say, the. <sighs> When it comes to the effects and, like you say, set pieces, fair dues, I thought he'd give you that one. Nolan likes his practical effects and that's why we like Lo- Nolan because he builds sets and he builds what he's doing. You know, Shane Black decided he was going to go the Michael Bay way and just throw a dose of effects around his Don't shitty little script. Don't fucking put Michael Bay in there. Don't fucking mention that shit. It's very much like a Michael Bay no, effect movie. If that's all no. Marvel was about, then that's, that's, that's Don't fine. fucking say Michael Bay and Marvel in the same sentence because I'll bloody drive up there and I'll stab you in the head. If that's what Marvel's become, all style, no substance. That's not what, that's not what they've become. To me, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, you know, that, it's not as good as the comic book story, but you said earlier on we're not allowed to speak about comics. So, as stories go, it's all right. It's an mm-hmm. okay story. Where's the trigger? Where's the trigger? Oh, really? We're going to the voice, are we? We're going to the voice. Okay. Cheap, so, cheap um, shots. T- cheap shots. Low blows. Uh, I thought that was quite a good Batman voice there. It was pretty good. <laughs> Quite happy with that, if truth be told. Because normally I sound like a little girl with a cough. I'll, I'll give I'll give your argument <laughs> an extra two points for the voice. I know Pepper gets kidnapped by a uh, fucking guy of neighbours or whatever. Um, you mean Smaug? Smaug? Well, he does become a dragon at one point in the movie. Oh, of course, that's right, yeah. I didn't even go there either. Oh, man, no, I missed so many points. Pepper, okay, Pepper gets kidnapped, and so Tony Stark has to go and rescue her and all that, and we know what happens after that. You've got the big set piece at the end, and Pepper ends up killing... What's his name? Ol- Aldrich Killian. Pepper ends up killing him instead of Tony Stark. That annoys me as well. I'll agree with you. It was Tony Stark's kill. It's Tony Stark's movie. All being about Tony Stark. I don't need fucking Pepper with superpowers. I agree with you completely there. They didn't really know what to do with Pepper in that movie whatsoever. So they made her some sort of extremist kick-ass bad guy. Yeah, and then it lasted all half an hour because Tony Stark fucking cured her anyway. But... You know, all right, I'm I'm pretty much done now. I'm going to fucking round it up. So it's a better story than The Dark Knight Rises. It's got better action than The Dark Knight Rises. It's got better dialogue than The Dark Knight Rises. It's funnier than The Dark Knight Rises. Oh, come on. Come on. What is funny in The Dark Knight Rises, Kim? No, no, that's not, that's not the argument I'm putting forward there. When was Batman ever funny, apart from when Joel Schumacher got his hands on it? Batman My is not supposed before, to be shut up. funny. My argument before was that in The Dark Knight, there were funny funny moments in the movie because because alfred uses deadpan british humor there were funny moments fuck off when you go and watch a dark knight movie or a batman movie of any kind you're not expecting to get chuckles fucking all you got in the dark knight rises was fucking alfred greeting so there you go so iron man 3 is better <laughs> than Dark rises suck it and that's the bottom line that's the argument if you agree with chris or you agree with kev get yourself onto the facebooks and the twitters and let <laughs> us know you can also comment on iTunes and Stitcher and Podomatic and all that. If you want to comment, let us know and you will get to hear one of us do our rendition of Wicked Wild Wild West as some or at least try to. Or at least try to. <laughs> I've got a funny feeling it's going to be you, but you know. You know what? No, it's not because you're wrong. So we will move on to our last portion of the podcast. Mm. <laughs> I think you and I are destined to do this forever.
I recommended Basketball for Chris. You did? Um, yeah, I was expecting it to be fucking awful. And it wasn't It wasn't awful. I was actually sat laughing. I was sat thinking, you know what, I'm actually enjoying this. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, so basically, I'm assuming most people won't have seen it. <laughs> It starts off. It starts off with two kids at a baseball game uh, back in the eighties or whatever, and then it does a sort of like a montage sort of thing where it's just all about sort of the the, the collapse or the fucking bastardization of of professional sports. Yeah, where it's all about the money and people are sellouts, and then it starts saying that teams of teams have moved state because there's more money and <laughs> you know all of that kind of thing. And there's a good line, which I actually took a note of, had to pause the movie to make a note of this line, uh, which is a typical fucking South Park sort of line, where they said, um, during the montage, they said owners were forced to recruit players from prisons, mental institutions, and Texas. (laughs) And I was laughing like a bastard at that bit. Um, So yeah, so we go, we, we sort of... We're thinking into the, into the future, and then we meet the two kids from the baseball game, which is uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone. So similar to sort of Biodome, really, they kind of they play like two losers, really, sort of done nothing with their life and all, you know, the usual sort of stuff. Except unlike Biodome, they're actually funny. <laughs> yeah. There is a scene where they're at the party, uh, where where they go into the like the host. It's like a the host is a lassie that they went to high school with. Mm-hmm. So they're at her party thing. They think that they're going through her knicker drawer, and uh, one of them starts finds the vibrator and starts licking the vibrator. <laughs> and then it turns out that it's not the host; it's the host's mother's drawer, which is just um, total, total self park humor. Definitely, yeah. Aye. So that um, did you just tag me in a post? Sorry. <laughs> Did you tag me in a post? I didn't, I didn't tag you in you anything. Did. 20 minutes ago, you tagged me in a post. Chris just got owned. <laughs> <laughs> you fuck. <laughs> Arsehole. Right, okay. Aye. So the lick in the vibrator bit. Um, so basically, at the end of the party, there's these two sort of douchebag type fellas. And so they, they ended up... They ended up <laughs> Are you alright? Do you need to take your inhaler or anything? No, okay? I'm fine, I'm fine. So yep. So they invent a, a new game of of uh, sort of back garden type basketball and just basically make up their own rules to sort of teach the douchebag fellas a lesson. And so yeah, we leave that scene. We go we, we go on their kind of they kind of in, like invent a new game basically um, called basketball. Uh, so they're talking about setting you know they're, they're sort of. It, it's kind of it's starting to take off and all that and then it fast forwards five years they're having another game in their garden sort of thing and there's bloody thousands of people there watching it so they have a rich billionaire fella who comes and says to them right i want to make this a thing i want to make this national so that's where it kind of picks up and that's that's kind of if, if memory because i didn't re-watch this myself but they kind of it becomes what they don't like isn't it again over time well yeah it's supposed to be you know the whole thing at the start of the movie is um you know it's all about the money and not, and not yeah. about the game and all that so at the start of it when they first you, you know go national on that it is like that um, and then the like the sort of owner of the franchise, I guess, dies choking on a hot dog. <laughs> That's a wicked scene. I remember that. It was funny. That was a funny scene because he was doing like the you know sort of the um, CPR, and the hot dog was like flying out of his mouth, which is just fucking ridiculous. I know, but it was funny. And uh, so yes, yeah, so he dies, and so the, I don't know which one's which, but uh, Cooper, the one Hi. with the Rick male hair, is sort of put in charge of it all. Yeah. Yeah. So after that, there's a load of different plot points and all that kind of thing, and it does become what they hated and what they didn't want it to become and everything. So, and then it ends up, you know, there's like a sort of generic love interest who I think was from Baywatch. I think yeah, it was, it was it was Yasmin Bleeth from Baywatch. Ah, yeah. Okay, right. Uh, and then you know, so she she runs an organisation for, for it's like sort of make a wish. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you watch it, but the little kid. Who, who was having the heart transplant and they take him out for tequilas and stuff. Yeah. Which was awesome. Is actually the son from Frasier. Is it? He plays Frasier Crane's son. All right. Oh, so, so this this movie really hit you where you live because you love a bit of Frasier. Oh, I like a bit of Frasier. Like, oh, I... So, yeah, so they start fighting over the love interest 
they both like her. She's a bit of a whore, really. She doesn't sort of say which one she likes. And yeah, so that that's pretty much that's pretty much the story of the movie. You know, it's all sort of back and forward and all that. You know, it's all sort of happily ever after at the end and everything. So yeah, that's, that's it's, fine. It's a it's a it's a generic sports movie, but with the sort it of is, with the it sort is. of South Park twist. Um, basically, the things that stood out out for me was the two blokes, um, Matt. Parker and Drake. Matt, is that Matt right? Stone and Trey Parker. Bygones. Yeah, that one. They're they're really fucking good together on the screen. Oh, of course they are. They were really, really funny. Um, and again, unlike Biodome, I actually gave a fuck about the character. Yeah. You know, which is always a plus. The character Squeak is fucking brilliant. <laughs> he's, got, he's brilliant. Basically, he starts off at, when they're still inventing the game. He starts off as like the sort of the gas man who's there to turn off their gas supply because they can't pay their bills because they've got no money. And uh, he keeps getting attacked by their dog and stuff like that, which is funny as hell. Uh, so he's just basically the, like, the little guy who keeps getting beaten up and knocked out the way and all that kind of thing. And I just, I just fucking love them. Uh, he's, he's sort of the shit kicker of the team, isn't he? And that's Aye. even when, when they're doing the psychotes. That's one of the psychotes, isn't it? When it's like, your yeah, sister's dating Squeak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's another thing. Um, the psychotes. Because basically the... They invent the, the the rule that you're allowed to put your opponent off before he takes his shot mm-hmm. at the basket. You're allowed <laughs> to put your opponent off any way you can possibly think of. So there's like a bit where uh, he has a fake hand and he's cutting off his middle finger. <laughs> and there's a bit where he's like, he's pretending to milk his own tit and fucking sprays <laughs> it in the guy's face. Uh, and then there's a bit... What did, what did you think of the Trey Parker Cartman impression? Yeah, that was awesome, <laughs> I... Um, yeah, and there's a bit with Squeak where he's trying to sort of freak them out with masks, and it doesn't work, and he takes takes the mask out off, and the guy faints. So it's just it's just it's just stuff like that. I just I, I really enjoyed it. I don't know if I'd watch it again or anything. If you compare it to Biodome, it was fucking brilliant. <laughs> I think if you compare most movies to Biodome, it's brilliant. This is true. This is true. Probably not Dark Knight Rises though. To be fair, I gave I gave you Biodome the first time round because I knew it was a movie outright that you just were not going to like. But, I mean, Paulie Shaw is one of those actors who no, nobody loves or hates him. Everybody just hates him. He's shit. Yeah. He's, he's not funny. Yeah. He's Adam Sandler before Adam Sandler came on. I, I, was, I was thinking that then. I was just like... I gave you Basketball because it's a movie that you necessarily might not have watched. It's a... I think it's a good movie. I always liked it when I watched it back in yeah, the day. Yeah, you know what? I would agree with you. Um, yeah, I... You know, I was feeling I had all the food poisoning earlier on, so I was feeling yeah. a bit shit, and so I put that on, and I was I was lying, laughing away and stuff. So to be honest, Rat Race wasn't that bad, so I couldn't go full retard on you. Yeah. So you have a you have a movie for me to watch then. I have right. I've, I've still got I've still got a list of three here for you. You've still got a list of three. I'm only watching one. I know you are. So let's think. So the movie that I am challenging you to watch. You might have seen it, you might not. It's a movie starring Eddie Murphy. Oh my god. When he was trying to make his comeback one of the times. And the movie is Norbit. Oh no. Yeah, I've not seen that. Yeah. Well, you are in for a treat. Right, I'll watch Norbit. Did you watch Norbit? Have you seen Norbit? I've I've seen Norbit. Oh my god. I was a big Eddie Murphy fan back in the day. I've heard about this movie and, and when people talk about Eddie Murphy, they talk about this movie. And not in a good way. Not in a good way, no. And there's a reason. So, Norbit. Norbit. I'll give Norbit a watch for episode 12. And we will be coming back for episode 12. In which I'll be reviewing Norbit. We don't know what else we're going to be doing yet. But we do know that one of us will be doing our Eric Cartman rendition of Wicca Wicca Wild Wild West. I am so not looking forward to that. I think... um we need to we need to plug it like a bastard because we need people to we need people to join in on yeah. the Facebooks and the Twitters. So again, get us on the Facebook on uh, www.facebook forward slash three six five flicks com, or you can get us on the Twitter and we're Twitter forward slash three six five flicks pod, or just type in three six five flicks. We're there, you know, we're there. Just come and find us. Comment, let us know. There'll be a little bit there for you to say who you want or who you thought argued the best or the worst. And that's what we'll come back and do. If you want to let us know anything else about the top fives, you have your own kind of top five you want us to do or you have your own top five for the the filmmakers we did, let us know in there. If there's any news that you want us to talk about, ask us and we'll talk about it. We'll give you our opinion. That's what 365 Flicks Podcast is. 
So we'll end that there. Episode 11, good times. Yeah, happy with that. Happy with that. I'm totally winning that, by the way. I think you're probably right. Your um, your rehearsed Iron Man stuff through me. That's why I had to go for a pee. You are now leading the world of Musings of a Geek Podcast Network. Stay geeky, my friends. <laughs>